evening. Welcome to the February 4th uh, Town of Scarborough Planning Board meeting. If you uh, could all please rise and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doreen, could you please do the roll? Nicholas McGee? Here. Rachel Hendrickson? Here. Roger Feely? Here. Robin Saunders? Here. Rick um, DuPerry? Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have uh, meeting minutes from December 10th, December 18th, and January 14th. All of you had a chance to review them. Are there any revisions to note? No, I will make a motion to approve the minutes as cited. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? I'm sure that's be unanimous. Thank you. Item number five, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to chapter 405, the zoning ordinance, to amend section 18.B, Highest Parkway District. Jamel, could you give us a little background on RJ? I you going to throw this to Jay. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so yeah, just by way of background here, uh, throughout the fall and the winter, the Long Range Planning Committee uh, has been reviewing the existing provisions of the Highest Parkway District which regulate how the ratio of residential activity is determined within the district. Um, as some planning board may, members may recall, this was an issue that this board struggled with maybe a year or two ago um, with an application um, at the Enterprise Business Park. And it was something that, based on that, that the, the trials and tribulations this board went through, that we asked the Long Range Planning Committee to sort of pick the issue back up and take a look at the existing provisions. <coughs> By way of quick background for, for those in the audience, back in 2012, Council adopted some updates to the Haggis Parkway District, really with an eye towards modernizing the zone and broadening some of the allowed uses within the district, uh, while still maintaining the goals of having the district be a, a growth area for high quality and high value uh, development. Um, so as part of this process, some of the uh, modernization including included uh, um, allowing for limited residential activities within the district, really mul mostly multifamilies or mixed-use type buildings um, were written into the district as permitted uses through a plan development process or the plan development review process. Um, and really with the provision that um, there would only be a maximum of 40% of the total floor area in any development uh, um, uh, utilized by the residential use. The remainder need to be non-residential. So working with the current provisions, uh, the planning board really identified that the language didn't provide clear guidance as to how you come up with that ratio, particularly in a phased project where residential development might get ahead of commercial development. And so that's really what the long range planning uh, committee worked on for a series of, took four or five meetings to really try to figure out um, uh, language that they were satisfied with recommending and bringing forward. So what's been proposed is some modifications to that language that provide for a regulatory approach through the, for the planning board uh, to determine <coughs> the maximum residential development that's allowed through the plan, and de plan development review process. So really at the outset through that master plan component, if you remember, plan development review process has three steps. There's a site inventory step, a master plan step, and then the formal site plan subdivision. It'd really be at that master plan phase where the planning board would work through sort of a conceptual design scenario that would identify <coughs> how much development, residential development, uh, would be uh, max allowed on a particular site. Um, so with that, um, you have uh, the proposed language before you with strike throughs and underline. Um, as I said before, this is really, or uh, as I indicated anyway, this isn't a, a new regulation or policy, I should say. It's really just a co uh, codification for how the regu uh, regulation, the existing language, should, should function. And hopefully this language will provide better guidance to applicants, staff, and the board moving forward. So that's my presentation. Happy to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, this is um, a public hearing, so we have an opportunity for a public comment on this item. <coughs> Is there anyone here in the audience that would like to speak? If so, please step to the podium. Um, 
let, let us know your name and address. All right, seeing none, I'll close public comment. Uh, so just just to start off on board discussion, I'll, I'll just say that, you know, I appreciate the work that the Long Range Planning Committee has put into this. I know they did go through this for multiple meetings. I remember being a board member here and really kind of struggling with how we do calculate something like this. So this should hopefully give us some better clarity um, from our point of view as to, you know, kind of that hard and fast gu guideline as to what we can, we can look at when considering these items. So does anyone else here have any comment? Yeah, question. Yeah. question. Unless I'm missing something here, this is, um, I'm thinking back to the enterprise. Sure. And um, in here, in the recommendation, they use the term, the terms at the outset of the plan development review process. Mm -hmm. All right. But over here, this is what's going to be the actual document right here. Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it explained in there clearly? So everybody understands it at you know at the outset. Um, let's see. Uh, that's a good question. So we talk about plan development projects consisting, really being determined by the board, um, in determining that we go through the conceptual build out analysis I talked about. Uh, so I guess it doesn't specifically identify the timing. Um, I guess it would be our assumption that through the master plan process, that's where the board would, uh, the, the, the adjoining and, and uh, uh, plan development review scenario, um, regulations talk about that that's the time when the applicant identifies sort of their, their, um, their uh, development pattern and intensities and uses. Um, so it's not spelled out necessarily here, but these uses, uh, as it talks about sort of right at the, in the um, header, that these uses are only allowed through the plan development process. So by, therefore, you know, one would, if they are looking to do residential activities, they would read this, these provisions, say, okay, we can only have a 40% of our square footage dedicated to residential activities. Then they start to work through the plan development process, and in reading those regulations, that's where you start to sort of build in the layers as to what's that development scenario look like and uh, that pad, what's the intensity. So, um, so, you, so you feel comfortable that that would be anybody, you know, uh, developing a plan development would understand? As <laughs> <laughs> we feel pretty comfortable with it, but okay. if, um, yeah. if there's suggestions from the board, we're always and, and, happy and then, to have another set of eyes on that. Then I assume that should anything change in that development, there would be amendments to the master reflect plan. that. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That's a good question. Good question. If you're satisfied, I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. Any other public? Okay. All right, so um, our, our job here was to hold a public hearing and get some comments. So I think we've done that. Um, I guess you can general favorability from the board is what I've gathered from some head nods. So. We'll move on to the next item. Uh, before we jump into this, I just want to say we do have a pretty full agenda this evening. So uh, if you're here before us and you've been here a couple times or you're reviewing a project that maybe we have uh, already looked at in the past, you know, assume we've read the materials, really kind of stick to that high level. What's changed? What do we need to know? Um, if you're here for a sketch plan, love to hear your vision because that's what um, sketch plans are all about. And uh, you know, you'll probably take a little bit more time, but again, be considerate of everyone else on this long agenda. So, next up is uh, the Zoean Development LLC requests a preliminary subdivision review for 28 Burnham Road, Assessor's Map R001, Lot 10. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project's located in the RF uh, zoning district along with the aquifer protection overlay at 28 Burnham Road. Uh, the applicant's proposing a 20 lot conservation subdivision. Uh, they were last before you all in at our last meeting in January uh, for a preliminary review. Just a few comments. Uh, staff suggests that the applicant discuss the viability of the remaining wetland areas on the property uh, once construction and grading has taken place on the lots and the roadways. And staff still has some uh, technical questions about the proposed stormwater controls, uh, but staff's comfortable with these details being ironed out uh, prior to the final plan submission. That's what I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the board may, may recall that we had this at the last meeting. Um, they're seeking a preliminary approval this evening. Um, let the applicant go in further about some of the changes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Steve Blake with BH2M. Um, since you saw this recently, I guess I'll keep it brief, but I'm available for any questions. Um, so as Jamel said, it's a, this is a 20-lot conservation subdivision. Uh, at the last meeting, <clears throat> there was some concern about the, the stormwater that was uh, flowing to Silver Brook. So the, the biggest change with this plan that we've made is uh, we've removed the, the backyard buffers um, and, and graded in a kind of a ditch or a swale that gets, eventually gets to uh, wet pond A. Um, so that was to uh, basically so that we can trim our peak flows um, at the Silver Brook analysis point. So that was kind of the, the, the biggest change with the, with the project. Um, since we were here last, we've received uh, an Army Corps wetland alteration permit, and I expect that we'll have the site law and the NERPA permit within a week or so. Um, so hopefully that will align with the final review of the subdivision. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you again for taking the extra time to come back and kind of clean up the plan for us. Yeah, no problem. Um, Roger, do you want to start here? Well, I, I think the uh, the biggest issue was, like you mentioned, uh, just as I noticed you haven't taken your jacket off, so you expect this to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, the biggest is issue was the, the buffers, replacing the buffers with the, uh, with the drainage ditch. Correct. Right? Yes. Um, and uh, I'm going to do, handle the boulders, the rocks, um, demarcating the uh, wetland area. So I, I think they've covered basically everything that I have right now. Thank you. Robin? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I guess I just want to make sure, Steve, that um, flooding and velocity and volume changes have been addressed. Are there... Um, it, will there be increased <coughs> runoff off the site at all? Volume, yes. Volume, yes. Yeah. Is that is that volume directed toward um, a wetland, toward neighbors, abutters? Can you talk um, to us about that sure. increase? Yeah. So we have we have three analysis points uh, for the stormwater study. One is Silver Brook, and the other two are are wetland. Uh, that flow mm -hmm. kind of to the north to the, the main piece of the parcel. Mm -hmm. So the, the overall parcel is about 98 acres, and on the, we're on the south side of that. We're, we're taking 54 acres. So the three analysis points are two wetland areas uh, and mm -hmm. also a stream. Okay. Um, I, <clears throat> so um, I get we, we've had a lot of um, <clears throat> concern before the planning board with... Um, runoff to adjacent properties recently um, uh, as as Susan Oglis our former you know um, godmother of the planning board would say you know all of the upland area in Scarborough has already been developed so it's leaving us with these sort of lowland areas that um, that are more challenging and you have to deal with the wetlands issues and you know wetlands issues compete with stormwater issues and so I guess let me let me just ask staff if I could then how we reconcile the increase of, of volume is it is it within um, I know it might be within DEP standards but we have ordinances that say that there should be no adverse impacts or changes off-site so how do we reconcile this Can I speak to that? Um, so I think and Steve, can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, though, that your peak flow rates are at or below pre-development. So the rate of runoff that's coming Correct. off yep. is, is typically what our board looks at. And so um, while I always say any development is going to increase the volume, and so it's really a matter of what we're doing at the outfalls um, to kind of protect our natural resources, our wetlands, mm -hmm. and then also protect the abutters, the abutting properties. And so part of those technical details, I think, that staff, that Jamel referred to at the beginning, mm -hmm. is really looking at making sure that we dissipate the flow okay. that comes out of those. And so we're talking about um, level of spreaders and, and aprons and making sure that that gets controlled, okay. I guess, at, the, at those outfalls. Um, 
but just to clarify, my understanding is is we are at the peak flow rates, right? Yes. That, so um, that's typically where we where we start, and then from there we look at how you control it. <coughs> okay, and then Mr. Chair um, and or staff, if you could just. Uh, clarify for me. This says preliminary subdivision review. Or are we looking for approval? The pre evening? preliminary approval. Okay. And do we have a draft motion on this one? Uh, no, because on a preliminary, we just it's we, a okay. motion to preliminary. Thank you. They'll be back. I missed last week. I apologize. <laughs> I'm feeling green again, so, but I'm all set. Thank you, Steve and Angela. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Um, have you uh, gotten any further response back yet from the Scarborough Land Trust? Or we have, still we have a meeting with uh, their st staff tomorrow morning. Um, so <clears throat> they have to go through their uh, their own due diligence process to make sure that, that um, the open space works for them. Um, so we'll, we'll find out more tomorrow about what, what that process entails, um, but we're, we're still working with them. All right, thank you. Um, on all of the uh, comments that uh, Jamel has made here, are there any questions that you have or any uh, areas where you think it would be difficult for you to uh, meet some of his uh, um, criticism? <clears throat> well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll meet with them to discuss some of the technical stormwater details, so I'm not intimately familiar with exactly what those entail, but um, I, uh, the other comments I don't see, see an issue with. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I think um, I think what it really boils down to is uh, sitting down with staff, you know, trying to work on that stormwater issue and resolve that. Thank you for, again for taking the time to come back, clean up this plan for us. Uh, so with that said, I'll uh, I'll make a motion for preliminary uh, subdivision. Excuse me, one second. Is this yeah. what, is there, are we having a public hearing with this or no? Oh, you are correct. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, thank you. Uh, there is opportunity for public comment here. Is anyone here? Want to get up and speak? If so, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing that, I'll just close public comments. Thank, Thank you for the you. reminder. Yeah, All right, with that, I'll make a motion for a preliminary subdivision review of 28 Burnham Road, Decessor's Map R001, Lot 10. Second. And a motion and a second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Show that name Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, Scarborough Public Schools requests an advisory opinion for 22 Muzzy Road, Assessor's Map, RO 38, Lot 24. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this proposal is located in the TBC Zoning District along Muzzy Road, at 22 Muzzy Road. Uh, so given that the school department is the applicant on this project, uh, the board is required to provide an advisory opinion on the proposal. The proposal includes a new parking area located to the west of the school building, the existing school building, additional stormwater controls, and a new portable classroom building. Staff has offered several comments on the project which have been provided to the board and the applicant uh, for consideration. Staff expressed some concerns about the spillover of lighting along the westerly properly line and suggests that the applicant consider mitigating this uh, with some additional light shields. Staff also suggests that the applicant consider planting uh, several new trees uh, adjacent to the portable classroom building to help soften the site after construction. And finally, this project will need approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to introduce yourself, please, for the record. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris DiMatteo um, with Goral Palmer. And like Jamel mentioned, uh, I'm representing the school department. With this uh, project, the board hasn't seen yet. Um, it is a plan that shows essentially a new parking lot with a future location of a, of a potential uh, classroom. Uh, that's like the second phase, the uh, portable classrooms. But essentially, project as it gets uh, implemented would be phased like this, so the parking lot would be first. Um, we have with us uh, tonight. The facilities manager, as long as along with the superintendent and some other board members from the school uh, department, as well as um, Lucas um, Anthony, who's the engineer. So if you have any questions with regard to stormwater, he'll be here if you have any questions. So I'm just going to walk you through the project. Uh, and I think I'm going to use this pointer here on this plan here. Is that OK? That's fine. OK. So we. Um, started work with the school department sometime in the, in the spring. Uh, we focused on um, 
the issues that they were having with regard to drop off um, and the lack of parking at the drop off and, and, um, uh, and pick up times. And so we kind of did a process and, and determined that uh, uh, probably a good 40 out of the 51 spaces here were being taken up by staff. So there really wasn't much surplus here when folks came in, especially with the buses here and folks wanted to kind of get out with their uh, kids and drop them off and then get back in. So uh, with that, we decided to kind of uh, focus on a new parking <coughs> lot here, which would be mostly for staff, but surplus as well. And that would free up a lot of space here for those morning and afternoon uh, pickups and drop-offs. Uh, this new parking lot is approximately, I think it's like 32, uh, 34 spaces. It, uh, currently now you have a drive that kind of comes in here and it dead ends with a dumpster right about here. So the new parking lot expands it quite a bit up in this area here along the property line. Um, we have some vegetation, new trees and, and evergreens along the, that property line for a buffer. Um, a new dumpster location here. And <clears throat> in terms of stormwater, we have a, a bioretention cell down in this area here, which outlets. That's planted as well. Um, I think one of the notes that the staff mentioned was some additional plantings here, so we put that in this rendering here. That would be, if that's what you were looking for, so it's great to know. Along with the parking lot, we have a um, new sidewalk that runs along here and connection into the, I think this is a, approximately where the gym is in here, so staff would come in and out here along with a connection from this entrance down to the existing uh, sidewalk here. Uh, with regard to this future phase, this is a, a classroom, portable classroom. Um, I believe it's, um, I think there's two of them here. So this would be an additional one, similar size. It's off-centered in order to kind of uh, limit the impact to the existing parking lot, but you would still have an internal um, hallway here that would connect to these two additional classrooms. Uh, this would be sprinkled. Uh, and we, as I mentioned, we spoke with uh, staff a couple of times and reviewed the project. With regard to the comments of the staff, I believe that um, the facilities manager mentioned, Todd mentioned that the, you know they seemed all reasonable and we would consider those as they work through the project for the building improvements. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> this is a uh, first time we're reading this, so we do have opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to step forward to the podium, please just say your name clearly for us. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Rachel, do you want to take first crack at this? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, when the I'm just concerned about the, some of the traffic flow. It, it looks to be a potential for a lot of congestion perhaps as the buses are in front or as people are coming out of that extra parking lot. But so the, the uh, well, I, well, I was wondering what you've done to, so the, the, what you're thinking is there. The, the, the circulation currently is uh, two way in here, and this is one way in this direction here. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't change. And so this would really be mostly primarily uh, for staff parking. So there shouldn't be, at, during, especially during uh, drop off and, and pickups, there's, there's not going to be any real circulation coming in and out of here that would upset anything here. We'd have the same type of uh, uh, circulation that works, that currently is there now and currently would be the same. So you don't see any sort of jam up with the buses? No, there? because I, this is two way now as it, as, as it exists today. And so people now that I think it's going to be better that you have availability here so people wouldn't be trying to park currently. They try to park in this area here with the buses and they get kind of jammed up. So here, they'll be just coming in and out of this two-way entrance. All right, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Robin? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> a couple concerns, I guess. Um, do you have a feel, or do, whether it's you, Chris, or maybe Mr. Jepson has a, a feel for what the construction timeline is? Will there be any winter construction? We don't have a feel for that. No. no. The, the hope is to be able to do this. Excuse me, could you just uh, approach that yeah. podium and state your name? Thank you. <clears throat> yep, 
if this is approved, our hope is to be able to do this work uh, as early as the spring and Great. complete it over the summer so that it's ready for the fall. Great. Excellent. We just get your name for the record, please? Todd Jepson. I'm the facilities director for the school department. Great. Thank you, Todd. Well, and I'd just like to say kudos, too, for maintaining really good stormwater features that belong to the town on town property. That's very important. It shows that the town is not only talking the talk, but walking the walk. So well done. I'll, I appreciate it. I'll credit Goro Palmer and Excellent. Angela for Sounds good. working together on that. Thanks. Um, my other question, I think, then, is for uh, Chris regarding um, snow storage and basically protecting the um, bio cell. Um, <clears throat> We've, we've asked folks in the past to, you know, basically provide protection to make sure snow doesn't go into either the cell itself or the four bay type of thing. Um, what have you got for us I think in your package? Uh, we, we acknowledge staff's comments on that. And okay. I think they're good ones. And I think in this area here, I think we, we would be looking at some type of, if it's looking at it with Todd in terms of cost, depending on what if it's a continuous type of barrier or perhaps some pollards or something that's going to keep people from kind of plowing in okay. snow in there, I think is reasonable request. And currently, snow storage here is, is what's dedicated right now in terms of the okay. parking lot. So we can be assured that uh, sort of public works will be told not to plow the snow into the bioretention cell. Right. And I believe if it's not already in, we already have... A, uh, instructions that we typically have for those types of features and so that's going to be given to the school department. Great. And um, I think, um, it, are, are there any objections to the trees, adding additional trees and tree covers? Well, maybe if this is what you were thinking of, is yeah. that something more than that or was that something that, that looked good? All right, and then was it, was there a question on the light fixtures? Are you planning to right, gonna be, follow code with the cutoff fixtures? Well, we do have the okay. we do follow code with the cutoff fixture itself, but in terms of the actual placement <coughs> of, the, of the photogrammetry, I guess uh, uh, basically has to be reviewed again by the folks who did that, and okay. we'll, we'll get that back and <coughs> make it sure it's it's compliant with the regulations in terms okay. of the spread of the light. And then uh, the um, buffer protection of the the stockade fence on four sides instead yeah, of three? Yeah, I, I think we we were intending to have all four sides. I think perhaps it's, we don't, maybe it's not clear that there's two gates there that would be the okay. stockade. Uh, so. I, I'm fine. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Roger. Uh, I'm basically fine with um, everything here. I just want to make a couple of comments. So um, I had two daughters who went to this school over 25 years ago. And it was traffic congestion then. So whatever you're doing is going to be helpful. So um, this is certainly warranted. Uh, in terms of the lighting, I also happen to work in the commercial building on the west side of this parking lot. And I think a little uh, sharing of light is good <laughs> because that parking lot in the back of that building is very dark. So, And especially with the teachers uh, you know, in the winter where they're going to be Going into that parking lot, uh, it's, there, you know, when it gets back at four o'clock, it's good to have some um, adequate lighting back there. So, I have I have no problem with anything else. Yeah. Thank you, Roger. And uh, for, for my two cents, um, I appreciate you being willing to work with staff on any of the outstanding items. Um, that looks pretty solid as a plan. So, uh, appreciate your produce um, your time here. And this is just an advisory opinion. So, I think. Uh, from the sounds of it, continue to work with staff, and good luck to you, and good luck on the expansion. Thank you very much. Thanks. <clears throat> Next item is uh, Hospice of Southern Maine requested master plan review as part of the plan development project for 11 Lincoln Ave, Assessor's Map R62, Lot 29B. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just as a quick reminder, this is located in the B3 zoning district, uh, sort of kitty-cornered uh, behind the existing Holy Donut restaurant. Uh, so the applicant was last in front of the board in November uh, for a master plan review and tabled the application then. Uh, as the board may recall, the principal review element for this master plan review was the primary access to the site, in particular as it relates to the proposed Route 1 driveway. 
Following the November board meeting, staff and the town's traffic consultant uh, have been working with the applicant to provide an acceptable access plan. So the applicant has revised the master plan, is proposing an entrance only now uh, along Route 1, with the primary access being provided along Lincoln Avenue. Uh, staff and the town's traffic consultant are comfortable with this approach. Uh, the, the specific details for the entrance only access uh, can be refined during the site plan review process with the board. I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, John. Would you like to introduce yourself for the record? Good, old, good evening. Uh, Andrew Johnston, uh, civil engineer and principal with Atlantic Resource Consultants, uh, and we're happy to be assisting Hospice of Southern Maine with this project. Uh, also with me this evening, in case there are any questions, is Daryl Cady, the CEO of Hospice of Southern Maine, if you have any questions about the operations of Hospice and Bill Bray, the project's traffic review engineer. As Jamel said, uh, we tabled the, uh, this application at the November meeting, um, seeing some concerns related to the entrance configuration that we had originally <coughs> proposed. Uh, after that meeting, we scheduled another meeting with staff and the town peer review engineer. It became very quickly apparent that the, uh, the primary concern related to the previous layout was actually the exit configuration onto Route 1 and how it could practically be presented in a way that would prevent people from turning left out of the site, which was a big safety concern, not just to the, to the folks here, but, uh, but to the applicant as well. So after that discussion, we uh, discussed with Hospice of Southern Maine the best way to move this forward. They agreed to abandon having the right turn out that was previously proposed on the plan and represent this on the master plan as an entrance only. Um, configuration as Jamal mentioned. Um, we understand that the, the revised master plan has been submitted around the town departments and we're glad to, to hear that uh, it's received the endorsement of the other reviewing town departments, the endorsement of planning staff and just as importantly the endorsement of the town's own peer review traffic engineer. So we're comfortable with this, this configuration and we're back now uh, asking the planning board for approval of the master plan so we can move forward with the project, complete the permitting, and, and bring this to fruition. Thank you very much. Uh, there is opportunity for public comment this evening on this project. If there's anyone here that would like to comment on this, please step forward to the podium. Well, seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Um, so I will actually go first this time, being your harshest critic from the last few, if you may recall. Um, I appreciate the work you put in here and taking the time to sit with staff to develop you know, an alternative that seems to work. Having the traffic reviewers um, on board with this project uh, definitely means a lot to me. Uh, I, I'm as a role in, as in my capacity as a member of this board. So uh, I'll start by saying thank you. That's, that's good work. I know it was hard um, and I know you probably aren't exactly thrilled but we're here and you've got another opportunity for this, so you know, kudos to you. Um, I don't have any issues with what I see here. Um, I do, I will say, um, there is a note from the traffic peer reviewer stating that there should be a monitoring period for that, that enter only section to watch for, for vehicle crashes and things like that. And I think um, that's a really smart uh, move on our part to put that in there, but um, just from my personal perspective, I see this as a, as a workable solution to what was, was an issue that um, I think that needed to be addressed before it could be forward. So, um, that being said, I don't have a whole lot else. We have seen this a number of times. <coughs> so, uh, I will ask Roger for any comments if he has some. Uh, no, I concur with what you, your comments. Um, I'm, I'm pleased you're back. I think it's a great project, and I'm glad uh, I'm looking forward to it moving forward. Thank you, Roger. Robin and Rachel. Well said. I, I completely agree 110%. Hospice, is, this is a very important service. You've done a tremendous job to, to, to meet the expectations and provide a safe ingress and egress and keep the Route 1 address. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I, I joined my colleagues. Um, I'm I, uh, with the... Uh, you know, gratitude for you, the work that you've put in and your willingness to, to listen to us and to, to take a look at some alternatives that I, I think uh, meet all of our needs. 
I, I have a couple of, I'm not clear whether they're questions or observations, but <coughs> I do notice on the current plan that you've eliminated in one of the parking areas and it is now listed as uh, future. Right. Yes, and, and perhaps I should have pointed that out in the... Uh, you, you'll recall it was, it was not the previous meeting, the meeting before when we originally introduced this plan, there was some concern about the, the level of parking, and hospice does actually have some, some pretty hefty parking needs with some of the programs that they run and overlaps with their staff. But So what we did as a compromise to that is take out that fourth parking field. We're going to design all the stormwater and all the infrastructure such that it could be built in the future if it's needed and we'll go with the plan that we have here which reduces the parking numbers down to about 85 for this building um, and should that extra parking be necessary we'll come in and, and seek to build that in the future. I, I notice <coughs> also that you're now showing a depiction of where the solar rays uh, would go and that's uh, something that we had also requested. Um, what a are they going to be built contemporaneous with the rest of the building? Is that your plan? That's the plan. Um, and the only, the only caveat I'll put on the solar panels is that technology is changing very quickly. So what we've put on there is, <coughs> is panels that are today's technology. This will probably de be developed over the next couple of years, as you can appreciate, probably take that long to, to get the building up and running. In that intervening time, the technology may actually move forward um, in decreasing the size of the panels that are required to produce the same energy load. And, and the target here is to meet the energy load, not just for this building, but for the Gosnell House, um, which is the, the residential facility. So that's the goal here, is to, to meet the needs of both. So combined with uh, the geothermal, are you that's gonna right. be completely uh, self-sufficient? Uh, we were, the calculations show being very close to net zero, but I'm not sure we quite got that. So, it, pending, we'll get to the updated calculation. It's very close if it isn't there. Well, I, I congratulate you on, on thinking about this as well in, in terms of, of getting to, to uh, zero, net zero on this, this building. It can serve as a model for more going into Scarborough. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. So that said, <clears throat> I will move to approve the conceptual master plan titled Hospice of Southern Maine, proposed by Hospice of Southern Maine, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Atlantic Resource Consultants, dated January 2019, with the following findings. Findings. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the conceptual master plan is consistent with the site inventory and analysis and reflects a reasonable utilization of the site given both environmental and build built environmental considerations. The conceptual master plan is also consistent with the space and bulk standards, <coughs> the development standards, and other requirements for planned developments in the B3 zoning district. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Show that unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So I've got, um, got kind of a unique situation here. Um, we, are, we are four here currently tonight. Uh, we need four to conduct business. We did have word that one of our other board members was going to be late tonight. Uh, so I'll, I'll put this to the applicant as an option. Um, <clears throat> have you temporarily tabled until he arrives? If he does not arrive, um, <clears throat> I, will, I am going to recuse myself in the sense that I, uh, just in full disclosure, uh, the Foley's are my next door neighbors, their daughters, babysitting for me and I hate to see that there's any impropriety uh, leveled against me. The full board can decide whether or not that would be a factor in how I would uh, vote on this. If need be, if we do not get our uh, alternate board member here, um, I would say by 8.20, or I'm sorry, 8 o'clock, about 20 minutes from now, does not arrive. If the board was comfortable, I would be willing to sit in this capacity um, and provide that as long as they're comfortable with me fully disclosing uh, what I have. So. Um, I'll give you the option. Do you mind tabling for 20 minutes to seeing if we can get another member here? 
or no, we'll do it the pleasure of the board. It is a minor amendment, so we're Agreed. we're comfortable. Whatever's the pleasure of the board, yeah. and uh, make you I, most I, comfortable. How do you board members feel about this? I, I would I would feel confident and and completely trusting that that you would be unbiased and and completely objective, and I don't see the need for you to recuse yourself. Okay. I will second that. <clears throat> Are you getting a free membership at this point? <laughs> <laughs> it's not been discussed yet. <laughs> so um, I appreciate that, everyone. Um, and, and two, I also I do feel a little bit more comfortable sitting in since this has been through a full vetting process in front of this board already without yep. my input whatsoever to it. Um, some of these changes are minor in nature. So um, if, as long as the applicant is satisfied, yep. it seems like the board is satisfied. We'll continue on. Let you please present. Right. Right. For the I'm record, sorry. I'm going to ask Jamel to tee this up for us. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so this is located in the Highgus Parkway Zoning District, uh, across from the Salt Pump pl Climbing Gym. So, as the board may recall, the applicant received site plan <coughs> approval uh, just over a year ago, in January 2018, uh, for a 35,000 square foot health club that included a mezzanine in the building. So the applicant is, is proposing to remove the mezzanine, is now proposing a single story, 27,700 square foot building. The building's architecture has also been modified, uh, but the layout of the site remains largely unchanged. Staff has provided the board with a draft motion for your consideration that includes many of the same conditions of approval as the January 2018 site plan approval. Uh, staff has provided several new review comments, uh, but feels comfortable with these being addressed as conditions if the board is comfortable. <laughs> I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jamal. And uh, just as a formal announcement, this is Foley's Fitness LLC requests a site plan amendment review for 33 Highgus Parkway, Assessor's Map R50, Lot 34E. Please approach the podium and Thank present. you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is David Latula, representing Foley's Fitness. Uh, Michael Foley is also here. The uh, uh, future owner of this facility, as well as Mark Singleman from Alpha Architects. Um, won't get into the site issues because the site really hasn't changed, so we have all the, the stormwater issues that we talked about and the, the nice treatments that, that were brought on. Um, but this is an opportunity for in just to go through um, the conditions that the staff have talked about carrying those forward. We're very comfortable with those, so we're good there. Uh, we took this as an opportunity. The, the second floor mezzanine, it required, between ADA, the two stairways and everything else, it really created a, an economic and then a whole facilities. How are we going to operate this? So Mike went back to the jarring board and he says, okay, let's do this on one story. <coughs> so he consolidated some of his uh, facilities. And at the end of the day, we got a better product. Uh, the first architect that we hired was from out of state, was kept pushing the that kind of barn look that we it was okay because it had to fit the, the design of the building, but we brought Mark on board, and I must honestly say this rendering is such a dramatic improvement, especially when you see it from the street side. You don't have that big tower of glass. You've got, the, it's, it's that human scale. And preparing for tonight, I went through the Scarborough uh, design guidelines, and a lot of the features, canopies, human scale, bringing that natural light and so as you're driving down Highgate Parkway you'll see the people working out on the first floor as well as as you come around uh, to the side and the entrance. So we think architecturally it's a big improvement using the same materials but bringing into uh, more of an architectural pleasant uh, features on that. One of the staff comments was on the uh, internal circulation. We are again going to request the 24 feet uh, the previous approval had the 24 feet versus 25. It's strictly less pavement, less treatment, and we feel within 24 feet the cars can maneuver. And I actually like it a little tighter parking lot. It keeps people quieter. It, it makes them pay attention and it and keeps the, 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 the flows down. Uh, but this is a single entrance exit, so we don't suspect there'll be an issue there. Uh, landscaping, we will be adding uh, some pines around the mechanical equipment to screen that. So that, is, that was a good point that was brought up by the staff. So we've already incorporated that of the new plan. Uh, like I said, on the architectural, it's the same siding that was previously approved. So we're going to go with, with that because it, it uh, everyone appreciated the colors in that look. Um, the other one Jamel talked about was the uh, signage. We're going to conform to the signage, so we'll have the number on the sign. We'll just we'll work with uh, the local sign company and say, just 
it's, it's simple. Make the planning staff happy and the code enforcement happy so we can get a building permit, uh, sign permit. Uh, the other benefit that we did was on the previous one, we had utilities coming from two or three different areas, so it required a little more clearing. So with the redesign, we were able to consolidate the utilities in the drive so less natural buffer will be removed. Um, and the, the last comment, they, the last two comments, the sewer line, uh, we will put the note that was uh, recommended by staff so that there's no hefty trees or anything vegetated over the sewer line. It is deep, but we have the same interest as the sewer district. We don't need the, the roots to start disturbing the, the sewer line. And the last comment was on the grease trap. Uh, with the redesign, the juice bar is a pretty small operation, and the sewer district recommended a small uh, in internal uh, grease trap versus the big external tank outside. So that was uh, when we talked about the sewer district, that's what they recommended, and it's a, a good solution for as little as uh, it's going to be there. So that's what we have. Uh, Mike's very excited to, to be coming back to the community. It took him a full year to get the, the plans together, but uh, it's an exciting project. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have opportunity for public comment this evening on this project. Is there anyone here that would like to provide any of the public comment? If so, please just approach the podium and state your name. Hey, uh, Patrick Hussey, 9 Memory Lane, Scarborough. And uh, I've known Mike for years now and uh, you know, been a resident of Scarborough for the past 10 years, coached uh, many youth sports. Uh, I have to say the community is really excited about this project. You know, he's going to be incorporating everything from youth all the way up to, you know, seniors, many different programs. And, uh, again, I'm very involved in the community and, you know, sports and athletics in the community. And it's uh, definitely caused a lot of excitement. So I just wanted to come here and take one minute just to uh, show my support and uh, excited about this project. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to make a comment? Hi, uh, my name is Jeff Quirk, uh, 123 Old Blue Point Road, and again, I'm here to support Mike. Uh, <coughs> really excited about the the gym. It's uh, hopefully coming to Hoggies Parkway. <coughs> I've known Mike for a number of years throughout different gyms, and uh, he's a class operator, and it's, it's it will be uh, well well fitted here in the town of Scarborough. So, thank you. Thank you. Julian Trapini Hoff, 315 Beechridge Road. I'm also here to support Mike Foley. I believe this operation is a top-notch operation. I'm very excited to see it to come to Scarborough. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, John Graham, 15 Herbert Drive. Uh, just like the rest of the clan here, I guess. Know Mike for several years. Uh, very excited to see this gym finally come to fruition. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Right. So that'll close public comments. Um, I'm just going to kind of throw this one out to the board. If there's anyone that has questions or comments, Rachel. Yeah, I have uh, a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> I note that you are proposing a roll-up um, window garage door type uh, entrance on the side at the, at the juice bar. Uh, we've actually had other discussions about that sort, of, uh, that sort of an entrance, so it's interesting that it seems to be a new feature that we're seeing more of. Um, is that going to change the way the juice bar operates? Is there any intent in the future to have chairs or tables outside, or is that simply an entrance-exit feature in the good weather? I think they're trying to have some of that outdoor feature to bring the out, out, outdoor in, um, but that's that we, well, on good weather to open it up so that you can have people finish your workout, you could sit outside, have your juice, and, and enjoy the, the outside. Well, they, they're gonna, is there going to be a setup of table and chairs out there? That's uh, the question. Uh, not, not initially, no. 
Uh, if, if there is going to be something, you're going to have to consider how you have those set up along, yeah. along the sidewalk. Yeah, so. it can't block the way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, the other question I have is, I, I believe I counted um, laboriously about 147 parking spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, you've dropped 7,000 square feet on the building, but you're still proposing 147 parking spaces. Yeah, and that's, that is based on the economic model, the marketing model that they've put together. Uh, a lot of the mezzanine space was for special programming, and believe it or not, when we did that mezzanine space, about more than a third of it was uh, <laughs> stairways on the, on the upper floor, and it was taking out space on the bottom floor. So you got very similar uh, amount of equipment in the single story versus the, the mezzanine. But by the Scarborough uh, zoning codes, by the Scarborough design standards, uh, that building only rates 97 spaces. Okay. Um, so I really, uh, I really uh, believe that the, the number of spaces need to be cut down to match the number, the, the amount of the square footage that you've cut. Now, I know you presented the last time you were here uh, a reason to have more spaces than might be allowed under the code, and I'm certainly willing to, to hear that, but to drop 7,000 square feet and not change the parking and not change the impervious surface uh, with a building that is that much smaller, I, I do have a problem with that. Okay. Can I answer that question? On yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, can you get up for the button? Thanks. I'm Mike Foley, I'm the owner of this project, and the reason why I want that parking spot, basically I've been in the gym business for about 30 years, and right now I work out of World's Gym, and I'm doing a similar model to them. And what happens is we have about 120 um, parking spaces, and it's never enough, especially with snow and everything else. So my feeling is if I want to bring the people from Portland, if you go to Portland and you don't have parking, you're used to it, it's Portland. But if I'm going to get the Portland people to come to Scarborough, if there's not parking, <coughs> I'm not going to have a chance. And when you look at a facility at a general time at a gym, if you've ever been in a crowded gym at 5 o'clock, it's nothing to have 400 people in the gym if it's really crowded at certain times when you're at programming. So, you know, 147 is not much parking in a gym. And people don't walk to a gym. You know, everyone thinks people walk to a gym. Maybe they do in Boston. But if you look at any of the facilities outside of Boston and the type of facility I'm trying to build, it's, you know, all those have way more parking than, because it's, it's people coming to the gym for 20 minutes. I've got a lot of senior programs. They'll come in for 20 minutes, but they're going to be driving. I've got kids programs. So you need the parking or it could just really get to be a issue of um, safety, you know, because people don't, you know, carpool to a gym. So when you look at a gym, there's never really enough parking at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 5 p.m. So you really need the extra parking, especially like I've got like a kid's zone. So I'm doing a lot of kids programs. So sometimes parents will be bringing their kids in. They'll be staying for a few minutes. Some people come to a gym. Everyone needs to work out. Some people only work out 20 minutes. Some people work out for hours. So I really need the type of parking to um, make it safe and make it accessible for people to come. Because if people are driving to a gym and they can't find parking, they're not going to keep coming back. You know, and it's just kind of different. Like the gym's kind of a different facility than like a, a doctor's office where <coughs> you're only having certain people at a busy time of the year. You just need plenty of parking. So that's the one thing I've always found with different gyms is if you don't have the parking, because everybody needs exercise part of their life. And if you don't have the parking, it's going to get, you can't give someone a reason not to exercise because they're fine. With it. And you just have to make sure you have more than enough parking. And that's my biggest concern. It's just too hard to <coughs> go back in once you don't want to start construction and go back and add more. You know, just like with the equipment, I'm spending a million dollars on equipment. I'm going to be the best equipped gym, so I want to make sure I have the parking to support it. Thank you, Mike. The other concern which we brought up earlier in the previous discussion is we can't beg or borrow from anyone else. Uh, I know World's Gym, there's a municipal lot across the street. Here we're on Highgate Parkway, so the only place that, that <coughs> is available uh, that our neighbor is the, uh, the climbing gym, 
and they have a parking problem at certain events. So what we don't want to do is be a bad neighbor. We don't want cars parked on uh, Hikers Parkway. So we want to be self-sufficient. So when they ran their numbers, 147 was the number that they came up on the market study versus what is allowed by code. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, for a, a gym that's 7,000 square feet smaller now than the 147, in other words, you originally asked for 147 yep. parking spaces for a gym that was 35,000 square feet. Yep. And that was more than was allowed by our design standards, mm -hmm. and we agreed. Uh, you are now proposing a gym that is 7,000 square feet smaller, yep. and you are saying that you still need 147 thousand square feet in spite of the fact that you have a smaller facility, uh, excuse me, parking spaces, in spite of the fact that you have a smaller facility. And I can understand the logic and the argument of having more spaces because it's likely that people do come and go a little faster than, than a doctor's office or, or some other facility. But uh, I'm not sure that's worth 147 parking spaces. And, and I just want to, I probably didn't articulate it well. Part of it is the efficiency of being on one floor. What was happening when we looked at, when we did the 35,000 square feet, we had 1,000 square feet here for a stair tower. So that's 1,000 on each floor. And we had to have two stair towers plus an elevator. And it created other inefficiency. So what Mike has been able to do with his equipment operator is pretty much have the same programming you know, on a single story versus having the uh, the extra space on the on and the second on floor. That model, I had a Mike, I'm gonna oh, have you go to the podium. Yeah, and, and that model, sorry, I had a two thousand square foot conference room where I was going to be doing lectures and different things, in, which we took out. So yeah. it's not really that much. And those were non-peak. Yeah, and those were then like conferences, just so say you had a doctor doing a lecture. So I just thought that would have been a great feature. But obviously, I had to eliminate that when I made it. So really, in terms of like equipment, um, as far as like members, all the pro farmers that got from Bangor Savings to get the loan, none of those numbers changed as far as like members of any stuff we're offering as far as for the gym. But I just took out the conference room. And we were originally going to have a doctor's office, and then we took that out. And so really, we just took out extra features, not so much gym equipment and all that staying the same. So. As far as like we're expecting the same amount of members as we were in the other place, it's just different. Just a different model. Thank you. Any follow-up, Robin? Do you have anything? Um, I guess in in uh, most cases, I think you know, it is it is prudent to basically budget what impervious area we use in a watershed. Mm -hmm. I think we've offset it a little bit by proposing a waiver of the aisle space. So instead of having a 25 foot aisle space, you're down to 24 to sort of go to yeah. Rachel's concern of yeah. the increased impervious area. Um, this is also, um, uh, you know, we're looking at very close to um, Scarborough Marsh. This is, yeah. this is sort of leading yeah. into Scarborough Marsh. So maybe one of the, the um, concessions we could think about is uh, maybe just disconnecting the per impervious area and I think you understand what I when I say disconnecting impervious area it means not allowing it to aggregate the concentrations that flow off type of thing and I know I'm talking yep. sort of engineering speak to you yep. and I hope that you can talk with maybe staff yep. to, to offset that um, but in this case um, parking standards are a minimum mm -hmm. and I would just like to say that I wish Every public hearing was as positive as this one is, um, and and in and in this case, uh, I, I guess I would would just I, I would like to put those sort of thoughts forward as you move to to finalize this amendment with staff. Maybe yep. work a little with them yeah, on that disconnection. Yeah, I know the engineer put a lot of effort with the lip spreader and really exactly. tried to keep it low yeah. and, and not dig deep into that water table. So a lot right. of thought and, and energy went into that. And it, we're very sensitive to the parking because the parking creates more cost on, on mm -hmm. this. So uh, I, I wish we could explain it a little better, but what we're trying to do on the parking question is take care of the peak. 
and the peak is is the gym versus the accessory uses. So, but I take your comments to heart, and we'll work with staff to. Thank you so that. much, Roger. Um, I understand your rationale regarding the parking, and I have a question regarding the mezzanine yep. that used to be. Yep. Um, my my definition of a mezzanine is that it's a second story, and usually it's a you know the middle portion of it is basically empty. It just is that the way it was. This, this had some empty areas so that you could transmit light through. Yeah. Right. So, so it was, I mean. It was more of a second floor. Okay, it was going to be a full second floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not as concerned about the parking because I understand the model you, you're trying to work with. Um, I mean, you've got all the programs and everything, you're still doing the same thing, you just do them in, in a slightly smaller space. So um, I, I, I think it looks, I like it, I, what it looks like. Um, I don't really have any further questions other than what's your timeline in terms of getting something started? Well, to be open in September. <coughs> uh, they'd like to be open in September and start construction as soon as they get the uh, permitting process completed. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm all set. Thank you, Roger. Uh, so uh, I definitely I can see the relationship between what you desire, you know, for your membership, how that impacts parking. And I think as a, <coughs> a rule of thumb, <coughs> our uh, zoning and our ordinances definitely try to address the different types of uses and how much parking you should or should not have. Um, I also think there's a point where we need to actually take into consideration the applicant's expertise in an area um, and you know the creating of the demand. Uh, and I'll, I'll throw one example out for us to all just remember as a board is uh, a nice brewing company that went in down the road and yes, they met ordinance. They they put in as many parking spaces as was dictated to them, and I think we all kind of had an inkling that it was coming, um, that it just wasn't enough. I think in this situation, we, you know, we should be trusting not only our guts on this, but also the applicants' uh, expertise in the area of business that they work in, and knowing what their demand is going to be in, in a business model, um, and accommodating for it. So I, I personally don't have um, a huge issue with the parking being left as it currently uh, sits as proposed. Um, I do think, um, Robin, I think that was a good comment on the stormwater, um, you know, the separating, and I don't know if that's something we worked, if we have general enough language in our conditions here to kind of <coughs> tackle that. I guess we have a question about what that, what she's looking for. Okay. Well, um, I guess it, it's, um, I don't know if your stormwater designer is no, here. No, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really a matter of um, they're they're treating a certain percentage, so it is disconnected, as you're okay. saying, a certain percentages. But if we're talking about more than that, I guess it would be good to give staff direction on on what we might be looking for, because mm -hmm. um, it would be a typical. This is a site law, or is it, it's, it's an amendment to a site it's law. It's amendment, yeah. So, um, so and they have to the meet heat. the certain, you know, percentage of impervious and, and um, non-impervious cover percentages. So you can always do more because mm -hmm. there's a piece that you're letting go. However, there's that piece that could be just going might not be practical to capture. So with, without having the storm and engineer to kind of walk through that, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what guidance staff can, can say whether, how easy that would be. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Is, uh, do we know if this is going to be curb and gutter, or is this just going to be graded uh, he, sheet flow? He does have it sheeting down to um, a gravel wetland. That's where we were talking yeah. about the depth yeah. of the stormwater system yeah. itself, because the groundwater is so high yeah. in this area, and, and obviously working around the wetlands, that was the concern. So I think early on, or the first time around when we got the approvals, I think everyone was, I should say, I was pretty excited about a gravel wetland. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the rest of you were. <laughs> I, I am too. Okay. I was. I was. <laughs> See, <Roger> was. <laughs> um, so I think it is not the traditional, but so I think they did go yeah, to a different a pipe level. system. Right, and right. They really we want to keep. Yes. We want to 
limit as much disturbance to that right. that moist air. And it's not just the disturbance that we're talking about here. It is the the aggregate concentrations yeah. and. And by having it sheeting and going to the, the, the gravel wetland that Angela is excited about, I think that it, it, it makes sense. Um, but um, I guess wherever you can, uh, you know, I, this is where I struggle too because, you know, parking standards are supposed to be a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, and it sort of goes against sort of the work I do yep. every day in yep. conservation. Yep. And I think I was glad that our chair brought up, we've had instances in town very <laughs> recently where people are squeaking out the minimum. And, um, you know, and, it, and they're parking on the edge of a, a river yep. kind of a thing. And in this case, <clears throat> look at the parking standards yep. and understand you're not gonna be parking in a green strip buffer you're not going to be, you know, doing yeah. these types of things, but you are going to be enhancing yeah. and um, sort of the sheet flow and mm -hmm. staying away from concentrated point source flow. Exactly. Just let it yes. slowly get there. And, and let the let grass do its job to exactly. attenuate yep. the, yep. The, um, the additional impervious area. Yep. yep. I fully agree. Okay. Angela, does that, are we on the same page? Yeah. I, I guess just looking as... I think just looking for direction on okay. if the board is looking for still more about reducing impervious, then are you looking at like compact car kind of spaces? Are you looking at reducing that number or are you just looking at we're still good with, I don't know what staff could offer, I guess, from what the direction we're getting. Right. Well, I, I think um, in the in the draft, um, uh, what do you call it, motion we have, we're already talking about decreasing the aisle width, yeah. which is taking away from some of the impervious area. But that's another good idea, which is um, decreasing some of the parking uh, dimensions themselves to provide compact cars so that it can meet the, the intent to decrease the impervious area. But, um, and, and I, I'm showing my lack of preparation tonight that I didn't scour the stormwater management um, sort of designs here and I would trust staff who has done that to say that there is some disconnection in the pollutants mm -hmm. are concerned as well so right and I think they pretty much yeah have well, I guess I, they've met the standard for for DEP and I think because they're at a site law yeah. you know thresholds so that they're meeting that higher standard right. so yeah. I think really to try to disconnect more I think might be a challenge for the okay. site. Yeah. Got it. But in general, as long as it's not curb and gutter and concentrating points. Right. This is not like I said, yeah. this no design catch bases, is very different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very different design than you typically would be right. seeing for yeah, a large parking lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So that being sorted out, I think, <laughs> and uh, I will make a motion here. I move to approve the project title Foley's Fitness proposed by Foley's Fitness LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Atlantic Resource Consultants dated 12-17-18 with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings, uh, I'm just, as written, I'm not gonna read them all. Uh, waivers, one, given that the applicant has provided an auto turn simulation for a 45 foot vehicle to ensure the proposed parking layout is adequate for emergency and public safety vehicles, the waiver to reduce the parking aisle width from 24 feet from the 25 foot standard is granted. Conditions, one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be rised to include A, the location for potential future access to the parcel located north of the site, B, additional landscaping provision along the western property boundary to ensure that the required 25-foot buffer standard along the Highgus Parkway is met, C, a note which provides the total impervious area proposed on the site, D, a note which provides the total disturbed area on the soil erosion sediment control plan, that's sheet C-103. E, the required plan note in accordance with Chapter 419, Post-Construction Stormwater Infrastructure Management Ordinance. <coughs> F, additional screening around the mechanical equipment pads located in the northwest corner of the building. G, the addition of the sewer utility line on the landscape plan. Condition two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit a pr for approval by the Scarborough Sanitary District. Condition three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, provide the final lighting details for the proposed pole and pedestrian lighting fixtures to ensure they meet lighting standards in the site plan review ordinance. B, 
provide the final building materials detail list, including colors proposed. C, execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. D, provide the final design of the turning lane within the Higgins Parkway right of way to be approved by Maine DOT and the planning department staff. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant shall A, provide a sign cut sheet that includes the locations for the proposed building mounted signs. These locations shall match the building elevations and renderings. B, provide the street numbers on the business sign along Highgus Parkway as identified in the staff review comments memo dated 2419. Five, prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall submit approval of the amended main DEP permit. Six, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is a very lengthy motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Robin. I have any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? I show that three to one. <coughs> Item number 10, GNC LLC requests a site plan amendment review for 336 US Route 1, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 1. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this uh, site is located in the B3, or General Business Zoning District, uh, across from the entrance to the Scarborough Downs property off of Route 1. As the board may recall, the applicant was before the board in October to receive an advisory opinion as part of a miscellaneous appeal process for an expansion of a non-conforming use with the Bo Zoning Board of Appeals due to a 2017 violation uh, for improving the site without approvals from the town. The ZBA granted approval in October, and now the applicant is seeking site plan amendment and approval from this board. While staff recognizes that the parking lot expansion does not represent an increase in intensity of the use on the site, such amendments are opportunities for the board uh, to consider bringing existing sites into conformance with the town's current standards. During the interdepartment review meeting, it was brought to staff's attention that the permanent exit-only access along Route 1 is not a signalized leg of the signalized intersection with the Scarborough Downs Road in Route 1. Given that the applicant does have access onto Noble Avenue, and in keeping with the town's standards, staff suggests that the board and the applicant consider the future of the Route 1 driveway access. Staff also recommends that the applicant enhance the streetscape along the property's Route 1 frontage. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamal. Would you please introduce yourself? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. Uh, as Jamel uh, indicated, we were before you folks back in October of this of the past year uh, with the first step in a miscellaneous appeal review process. Uh, at that point, we asked you folks for an advisory opinion to forward to the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals actually met that following night uh, and did grant in a, a unanimous approval for uh, the applicant's miscellaneous appeal. Uh, so to close that loop, we are back before <coughs> you folks. Uh, as you may recall from reading through the application materials that we provided, uh, there was a reason for the delay, and that delay yeah. was uh, in our efforts to coordinate with the developers of the Downs, uh, to, in particular to talk a bit about the anticipated uh, changes timing-wise uh, of construction of any signal improvements at Route 1. Uh, as Jamel indicated in his introductory comments, the site does have access off both Nobile Avenue uh, and Route 1. Uh, the full access is actually from a northbound uh, in and out, if you will, uh, from Route 1. We are not on a signalized leg of the existing uh, light at Scarborough Downs. And in speaking to uh, Rocky Risbera regarding the anticipated timing of when they would be looking at potentially doing some improvements, construction-wise, that looks at about maybe a year out with the next year being sort of in the design and review and approval process. That dovetails with the applicant's uh, thoughts on doing some master planning for his properties. If you recall, 
uh, when we met with you before, the applicant actually owns the piece in question, but he also owns the adjacent property at 336, uh, 334 uh, U.S. Route 1 as well. Uh, in addition, in the interim, he's actually acquired another piece of property at the end of Nobile Avenue. Uh, so the thought is that the timing and looking at what would be done at the signal at Route 1 would dovetail with the applicant's timing and look at his aggregate property. Uh, we don't have any master plans for you at this point. We don't have any program for that. But we do want you folks to know that that is in the thought process, and we are aware uh, that the current intersection uh, is not on a signalized leg. The, uh, in the reality of the matter is that we do have a full access at Nobile Avenue, um, but again, southbound left turn lanes are precluded by a median that's actually in Route 1. So we do have only full northbound access, uh, whether it be at Nobile Avenue or uh, at the intersection uh, near the signal for Scarborough Downs. So that is something that, you know, as staff highlighted, we had highlighted it to you folks. That was why we, it took us a while to come back to you, um, because we wanted to be able to discuss that uh, and have that sort of as an understanding of what was going to be happening uh, there. So kind of going back to the heart of the issue as to why we're here, um, back in 2017, there was some work that was done sort of along the common lot line between the applicant's two properties. And that work, uh, represented a change in the slope and an expansion of the area for the vehicles that are parked on the site. The site actually has two uses. They've been uh, operating on that site for a number of years. Uh, there's a house that is rented. It's a residential use that's right uh, on the frontage of the property. And the building to the rear of the site is Crossroads Automotive. And so as part of the uh, operation of that, they had vehicles on display. There's a pinch point if you look at the originally approved plan, which dates back to the 80s. Uh, there's a pinch point right near the front corner of the building, right where that cursor is, Jamal's got it. It was about 17 and a half feet wide. And so with the changes that were made uh, in that slope area, that allowed that to, m to be widened out so they could actually have about 25 feet clear on that building corner. What that allowed them to do was, from an internal circulation and maintenance standpoint from plowing, sort of spread things out a little bit. It did overlap onto the adjacent property. The applicant owned the property, didn't anticipate he was doing anything in particular that was wrong, but uh, found out in the process that obviously he needed to have a permit to do it, but that was after the fact. Uh, so when the item was uh, discovered um, and notified by the, uh, the town notified the applicant, Part of that notification was a plan that Angela had actually prepared uh, to do some restoration of the slopes so that it would be stabilized. Um, and so that was implemented right when that was received. So that's been done uh, for old, well over a year now. Uh, so the, the slope is stable. Um, it is expanded out. There's a, where the green area is on that site, sort of a lighter green, that's actually uh, crushed gravel and, and the vehicles have been displayed uh, on that. The darker green on the area is the slope, which is rip-wrapped. And the runoff from that particular area comes down. And if you look on the adjacent property, you'll see the driveway going in uh, to the house. That's the applicant's other piece of property, and that's a, a rental property. There's a culvert that's right under the driveway there. So any runoff from that slope area comes into that culvert. If um, you can look on our, either our board or Jamel can s sort of zoom that out, you'll see that that culvert is um, well in excess of 200 feet from uh, Millbrook. So Millbrook is down there. That sort of blue line you'll see at the bottom, there's Millbrook. The lighter blue area shaded in is the 75-foot stream setback. Runoff, that culvert existed. That was there for the original driveway. So runoff from this site uh, has and always uh, had uh, come through that culvert and then made its way down to uh, the brook. There was nothing that was done on the downstream end of that culvert. Nothing basically from the toe of that slope down ever changed from what it has been uh, previously. So we provided for you some drainage calculations which are in the packet uh, that was reviewed by staff. Um, we do show a very, very, very slight increase which ranges from 0.02 CFS to 0.05 CFS uh, and that's at the inlet to that cross culvert. Um, and that is simply as a result of that additional 
uh, work that was done along that slope area. Given the fact that we have a long distance that has not been disturbed uh, in an area that's been stabilized since 2017, I'd like to be able to have the opportunity to allow that slight increase, especially recognizing that in the longer term things are going to be changing uh, on that site. To answer the question about street trees, uh, I did talk to the applicant a bit about that. Uh, landscaping uh, along the site frontage, planning of street trees, that type of thing, something we'd be happy to work with staff on. The only comment that I would ask on that is, I know from doing a little bit of research on the DOT's uh, evaluation of the quarter, and especially in light of potential changes at that signal, whether it makes more sense to, rather than actually physically plant trees, is to provide an equivalent escrow to the town, uh, such that when the changes occur along frontage, we're not digging up a tree, we just plant it. Um, but that's something that's at the discretion of the board and staff for that. Um, but we do acknowledge that we would be uh, cooperative with putting in some additional landscaping there. So. Um, back in 1985, there was a restriction that there be no more than 20 vehicles on display. Uh, we do have the 20 uh, display vehicles highlighted on the plan. We also have two spaces for the house, which are directly behind the house, and three spaces for uh, staff for Crossroads Automotive. Uh, if you remember from our application materials, um, at the time that we filed, there was a transition in ownership of Crossroads Automotive. It has happened. Uh, the name will stay the same, the operation will stay the same, and I believe one of the board members, or perhaps it was um, one of the members of the Board of Appeals, asked on the hours of operation uh, of that, and I do have those. Uh, it's Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and on Saturday from 9 to 1. Uh, so with that, I would certainly entertain any questions. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, we do have an opportunity here for some <coughs> public comment this evening. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this topic? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Mr. Chair? Yes. Just in the interest of full disclosure, I have purchased my vehicle from this place. I just want to <laughs> put it out there. If you feel like I'm going to be <laughs> impartial, please let me know. I think you're going to be all right. Disclosure, you think? I think you're all right. Yeah. Did, did you pay for it? Any other? Yeah. We <laughs> 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 need that sale price. <clears throat> so, uh, Roger, would you like oh. to start this one? Um, sure. Um, on on the access, is there is there an island, is there a raised island on Route One right at Nobile? You know, yes. With, as, as well as with the current entrance, is there a raised island there? There's not none there though, right? No, you could you could make a turn uh, southbound, uh, left turn. You wouldn't have the benefit of a signal, but you could make a physically make a turn in there. Um, to come in. That's right across the street from the uh, tire, the tire nope. facility. No, um, that Scarborough entrance Downs. is opposite the signal for Scarborough Downs. Oh, is it, oh is it right there? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the Nobile Avenue is a little bit closer to Sockville. Okay. Um, I don't know. I Sorry to distract you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I I have no problem with the uh, the current entrance, because you can go from the current entrance, you can head south right on Route 1, right there, is that correct? Because it's right opposite where the Downs is right now? If you were to go southbound, you would have to make an unsignal, you wouldn't have the benefit of signal head to right, give you a you protected could, left turn. Yeah, okay. And on no, no Beal, is that, is that a paved road, do you know? Or uh, it's just partially a, paved. Yeah, okay. um, I mean, do, do, do they use it at all? Uh, there, there are a couple of houses at the end of it. Um, one is the piece of property that I mentioned that the applicant yeah. has recently purchased, uh, but there is another home there uh, as well. So there are a couple. It's a dead end yeah. private way. Yeah, I, I would. I guess I would. I have no problem with the way it's currently being operated, using that entrance, right opposite the downs, and especially where they might be in the future coordinating with the downs mm -hmm. with the signalized um, and the um, I like the idea of in, in lieu of having some trees planted set up some uh, an escrow account but you know in lieu of the trees right now uh, to accommodate any changes in that intersection in the future that's what you mentioned mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, I'm all set. Thank you, Roger. Robert. Can you explain the sort of, explain what Roger just said again, as far as <laughs> instead of doing trees, do an escrow account? So if, if we work with staff and staff says you need to plant two street trees along the street frontage, we would physically purchase them and put them in. Instead of that, there would be an estimate that would be prepared for what it would cost to do that, and that money would be provided in an escrow account to the town, such that the timing of that would be when it was appropriate if there were any widening or anything that needed to happen along that frontage that was done by DOT or any, anything else, that those trees wouldn't be basically a year in the ground and then have to be taken out again or destroyed in the process. So I guess I'm a little more concerned with um, <clears throat> proximity to Millbrook, mm -hmm. and Millbrook is impaired. Threatened. Threatened. Thank you, Angela. Um, and the fact that we have um, a slope and, again, we have contiguous ownership, correct, between 336 and 334 U.S. Route 1, and the culverts, and um, I guess I'm just a little more concerned with, with that than I am. I guess, what are we going to get for the increase that you're proposing in peak, in the peak flow? Are you going to, are you proposing anything to, to mitigate that? Well, thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, she's going to ask me for something. <laughs> no, um, I thought about that, and, and here's where I struggle, okay. is that right now I have disturbance that happened in 2017, which is stabilized, mm -hmm. which is a significant distance away from the brook, and all of the area that's from that limit of disturbance down to the brook, which is controlled by the applicant was not affected by those changes. There was no clearing, there was no ditching, there was nothing that was done. And the concern is that if we go in and we try to do something, mm -hmm. we may end up disturbing more than if we just left it as it is and looked at it, certainly respecting the fact that the brook yep. is a key issue in any future use of the site. And this is what I'm thinking, Nancy, is maybe between um, the, the toe of slope on that sort of, um, what, did, what did you call it? It's not riprap, it's, did you say it's gravel? The, the, the slope? surface is crushed gravel, the slope is riprap. Okay, <coughs> I'm wondering, could you put like a, a shrub barrier or anything like that to basically slow down things and to maybe hold back some sediment before it goes mm -hmm. through the, 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 the mm -hmm. uh, culvert? Mm -hmm. And then down to perhaps some tall grasses yeah. or something of yep. ground cover nature. Yeah, yeah, we could look at that. Um, that would yeah. be fabulous. Yep. Um, from I think from a sort of holistic view, because I'm with you on the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Okay. Um, um, so I guess that would be an in lieu of having the heightened net change kind of a thing. Um, Question for staff, Ange, are, are you following me? Are you saying downstream of the culvert crossing? No, no. upstream of Up the culvert. Right Which, at the toe of the fill. Oh, so below the riprap. Right. Yes. Okay. okay. To, to basically <laughs> act as a barrier kind of and thing. And they have control of that property? So they yes. Okay, and so my question to staff is, has there been this type of escrow done before for uh, putting tree, planting trees in the future at today's costs? That's, my, that's one of my concerns. So what we typically might do as a performance guarantee, say um, there's a, a landscape plan um, that isn't executed at the time of certificate of occupancy, mm -hmm. we do hold them out basically at today's cost, but it is ultimately the applicant's responsibility to put in whatever is okay. remaining. So we, we would say, okay, you yeah. said there's going to be three trees. It's yeah. three years later. It's time to put in three trees. We may yeah. be holding $1,000, and okay. if three years later it could cost $1,500, but we would still hold that 1000 until it's executed. You hit the nail on the head is okay. what I was looking for. Okay. Um, Are, 
And is the applicant okay with no more than tw going back to the no more than 20 vehicles displayed at any one time? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I have any other comments. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, um, I'm familiar with with this because it has been be, uh, has been before as before. Uh, I guess the only question I have for, or the, the comment I have is, uh, I appreciate the heads up knowing that there might be a master plan coming. Uh, and I then look at Millbrook and wonder um, what might be happening and how a master plan would be ready to ad address oh, some of those concerns around, around the brook. How far back is the potential acquired property? Um, if you look at that plan, you'll see, uh, Janelle, you can slide it a little bit. The applicant currently owns the way down there. Mm -hmm. And so the, there's a piece, the text is just above the um, St. Clair Associates text. That's the piece that was just acquired. So there's one parcel in between. So up above, Jamal. Up here? No, over here. This way. The other way. Down. <laughs> right down the bottom, see where it says St. Clair? Yeah, right, right there. Yeah. You just had it. Right there. Yes. All right. So that piece is the one that was recently acquired. The applicant already owns that shaded green, which tucks in behind that. And then there's one piece um, above it. How about, how about just that piece that just acquired? Uh, I don't know the exact square footage. It's probably, if I can look at it, it's probably a little less than an acre. The piece, the biggest piece is the one that's highlighted in light green. That's the one he owns. That's um, 334 uh, <coughs> US Route 1. And that goes along the river of the brook. Well, I, su I suspect this is going to be an interesting plan that comes forward because there are some concerns around the lot, some right. challenges connected to it. So yeah. again, I appreciate you bringing it, giving us a, a heads up on that. Um, I'm I'm satisfied um, with what you've got. I like Robin's suggestion and your, your agreement around the plantings um, to screen the culvert. And I have no problem with an escrow account. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think they've covered the bulk of this. So we do have a draft motion uh, prepared here tonight. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes. I have some proposed language for the row of vegetation to give I, to Jim. Oh, you got we it. We have okay, some perfect. going here, okay. so Sounds you let good. me know how it pans out. Right on. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, I move to approve the project title 336 U.S. Route 1 proposed by GNC <coughs> LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by St. Clair Associates dated 1919 with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated here uh, in the draft motion. Conditions, board, I'm oh, sorry. Conditions, we are looking at, sorry, 1B for anyone following along on board. <laughs> so the conditions are, at the time of intersection improvements, the applicant shall either participate in the improvements associated with their leg of the signalized intersection in accordance with DOT requirements, or the driveway will need to be eliminated. Two, additional deciduous trees plantings along the site's Route 1 frontage to be completed in coordination with the intersection improvements and an escrow account to be set up to ensure compliance. Three, no more than 20 vehicles are to be displayed on the property at one time. Four, additional plantings along the easterly parking spaces for additional stormwater management controls. This is to be reviewed and approved by planning staff. That is the current motion. The only, the only thing I would add is that the, the long-term maintenance plan as required by Chapter 40 five or nine, whichever it is. I don't believe they would trigger that. That's triggered when you disturb one acre or more. Okay, <coughs> and we're outside that spectrum. Uh, don't we're believe, inside. I that. don't believe they've disturbed okay. an acre. Okay. I no, could be wrong, but it, okay. my assumption they have. Okay. So I have a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Sure that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. So I have uh, up next, Pat Co. Construction requests a sketch plan review for 238 Gorm Road, Assessor's Map R38, Lot 15. Jamil. All right. So this 
project is located in the regional business or B2 zoning district. Uh, the property is located approximately across from the Meineke uh, facility on Gorham Road. So the applicant's proposing to remove the existing structures on the property and construct a nearly 8,000 square foot auto parts retail biz building. Just a quick reminder that the sketch plan is an opportunity for the applicant and the board to have a high level discussion about the proposal prior to a formal submission. So as the board understands, ac access management along the town's busy corridors has been a challenging review element. The applicant is proposing to maintain the two existing curb cuts along Gorham Road. The town's standards seek to have no more than one full service driveway unless there is a benefit to traffic hazards or congestion. The applicant will need to provide documentation with the formal application for the board to consider this proposal. The applicant should also look to modify the proposed driveway to better align with the driveways across uh, the street from the project. Staff also suggests that the applicant discuss whether the use will exclusively be on-site retail or if it will also include wholesale distribution as this will inform the type of trips to and from the site uh, as part of the traffic study. Turn it over to you. The applicant, just introduce yourself, Andrew. Good evening, Craig Burgess with Sebago Technics, here tonight on behalf of Patco Construction. Greg Patterson with Patco is here with me tonight, so he can answer any questions related to the building. So the project involves the construction of a new 7,900 square foot building, as well as parking, walkways, drive aisles, landscape and stormwater infrastructure and utility improvements. The existing site is currently developed for two buildings. The two buildings are the former NARA restaurant and also a single family residential dwelling unit. As it stands, the site is not in conformance with local standards because the single family dwelling unit is not an approved use in the B2 district. So with the redevelopment of the site, we're going to bring the site into conformance with standards with the construction of this new facility. It will be for the uh, auto parts sales and warehouse. A large portion of the building is a warehouse, approximately 4,400 square feet. As part of the redevelopment, we're looking to utilize the two existing curb cuts that exist today. And the plan that's before you shows where those two curb cuts are. If you're looking at the plan, the one, the curb cut to the left is, serves the restaurant. The one to the right serves a single family dwelling unit. Construction will also involve the complete demolition of the two buildings and the pavement. The, built, the building shown on the plan right over here, we are hopeful that it's going to be a, a complete upgrade from what's out there now. We feel that it's a, a very attractive solution compared to the restaurant, which has been there for a while now and is antiquated and old and in desperate need of a facelift. So, we're hopeful that this is going to provide the face, the, the improvement that's needed for this site. That's an invisible spot along Gorham Road. The site is also, I didn't mention, it's immediately west of the Shaw's Market. And there's also the other uses surrounding the site. The, the use here generally is consistent with those uses. So we feel that this is a good project for this area. The amount of parking shown, 32 parking spaces, that's based on the building be in a, full, a commercial building. Uh, the commercial use requires four spaces per 1,000 square feet. With the majority of the building being a warehouse, we would ask the board tonight if you would consider a reduction in the amount of parking spaces, possibly as we move forward with our design. The warehouse use requires two spaces per 1,000 square feet. So when going through the calculation, the site would require 24 parking spaces, which would mean a reduction in purpose area. Um, our traffic engineers had the chance to look and provide a traffic memo for this project. And what they found is that because the current restaurant doesn't serve breakfast, um, the, the traffic peak trips are generally less than all peak trips during the PM and then on Saturdays with the exception on the weekday AM. So there's only an additional nine trips anticipated with this project. Other, other improvements include stormwater. So I, I would propose that 
possibly two under draining soil filters, maybe one in a stone drip edge will provide stormwater treatment and detention. And landscaping will also be provided along all sides of the building and a robust landscape plan along the frontage of the dorm roof. That's about all I have tonight. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, Actually, there is no public comment on this. This is a sketch plan, so we'll just kick it off to the board. So, Rob, go ahead. What do you consider a robust landscape plan on the frontage? It'll be a mix of trees, uh, bushes. We'll have one of the landscape architects at Sebago Technics take a strong look at it. Okay, so how are we going to have a robust landscape plan and still two curb cuts? Well, you know, there's, there's, there's about 130 feet of space and there's a, there's a, I want to say a 20, I forget by memory, but there's a, there's a landscape buffer or vegetated buffer along the front there. So that whole mm -hmm. front space will be okay. landscape. Okay. Um, it, it just feels, um, so I, I guess I would, I, I guess what, what's your, what's your basis for keeping the two curb cuts? Because we, at least the way it is now, we had two different uses. But yep. what's your sort of theory? So the, the two curb cuts, one, it, we're going to have a tractor trailer come through the site at non-business hours. So it promotes the flow of traffic through the site, especially considering the large tractor trailer. Also, it eliminates the, a dead-end parking lot here, and it allows traffic to flow through the site. I've reviewed the comments that we received from town staff, and mm -hmm. our traffic can certainly evaluate the two curb cuts related <laughs> to specific traffic-related issues. Mm -hmm. But at a minimum, I would, I would at least, we it would be desired to have the curb cut to the west, because that is that is the curb cut that serves the restaurant, and mm -hmm. that's critical. Yeah. That one curb cut is critical for the tractor trailer to get into the site and be able to maneuver around. Okay. And that's, that's existing. That's about the same width as what's there now. OK. Um, is this going to be sort of like an auto zone or a pet boys or something it's like Napa, that? Napa auto parts. OK, so a Napa. Yes. I, I don't know that there are many other Napas and VIPs and all that who have two curb cuts. So I think your work's going to be cut out for you there okay. kind of a thing. Um, I love the idea of having a robust landscape. Um, I'm also wondering, are you going to trigger stormwater uh, thresholds at all because you're, you're basically in existing impervious and <coughs> limited yeah. disturbed area? We anticipate the amount of impervious to be a little bit more than what's out there now, but overall less than one acre of impervious mm -hmm. area. So with the redevelopment of the site, we're aiming to provide treatment from a minimum at least 50% of the of the site. Okay. Um, and do you know what watershed you're in in this area? It's within a stream watershed that drains. I'll have to do my. Okay. It's not the marsh, I don't believe, but Angela, could you? Do you know it? I'm assuming it's the nun's edge, but I have. Yeah. But it's pretty close to Redbrook, too, yeah. or where there's, yeah. Um, Redbrook uh, is further down by. Uh, right, it's, it's, I know it's not in Redbrook. Okay, got it. <laughs> and we don't think it's in Millbrook, mm -hmm. either. No. Okay, let's just do our homework on that. Yeah, yeah, I had okay. it, I had it at one point. I believe okay. Angela's right, it, it, it's in an, um, None such. A, a stream that flows in Nunsuch. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Rachel. Yeah, the, uh, that easterly uh, curve cut, that's the, what used to be the driveway for the house that's currently there? Correct. So it's already, it's already existing. Um, yeah, I, I think I would have to think long and hard before I approved or voted for a second curve cut. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, and I also don't have uh, an issue if you want to have um, fewer parking spaces. Uh, I, 
I also uh, am in agreement with, with Robin that we really need to see a good landscape plan there. Um, I'm also appreciative of the fact that we're going to have something different than the buildings that are there that have, have uh, certainly seen better days. So it's nice to have a, uh, a good modern business there, but uh, are you looking to have, does Napa have any particular franchise design standards? Yes, and actually at this location they're going above those standards to make sure it's a very attractive building for this space. I, I, I look forward to, to seeing them. Um, while we do work with the design standards, sometimes I, I at least look at them and say uh, they really don't fit Scarborough. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, their intent is to uh, meet as much as possible our design standards. Um, well, I look forward to the, you know, to your next application, to the to additional information. Thank you. Um, the, um, the design, the sketch you have up there, is that generally what the building will look like? Yes. Okay. I think it looks attractive. Um, is it going to, are they going to be doing servicing on vehicles there as well? No. Just, just retail, strictly? Retail, and then they have a warehouse component to it. Okay. Um, was there ever any consideration of, real, uh, of locating the building, you know, closer to the road? And why, if not, uh, if so, why did you locate it where it is? So this is a, if you look at the parcel, it's a triangular shape. So it's, it's provided the building size that was, we've already reduced the building size to make it work. And there's really no other place on the site to be able to get that building in the required amount of parking <coughs> and to have a, a large tractor trailer be able to get into the site and then out. This was really, we tried rotating it and that didn't work. It, it was a really tricky site to design, provided the shape of it, which is why it's critical that that westerly curb cut, um, considering that grandfathered and utilizing that existing curb cut is critical to the design of the site. Now, if you if you had a tractor trailer coming in, where would they be? Where, where would the would there be a, like a loading dock or something? Yeah, there is an overhead door facing right there. There's right, an overhead right there. door facing Gorm Road. Okay. And Patco Construction is going to really dress up that door quite a bit, so it blends in with the rest of the building and doesn't really have that appearance of an overhead door there. That's the so, uh, that's the door on the right side. Yes. That sketch. And, and and that is that's not a loading dock. Uh, what what is going to be needed is the tractor trailer to come into the site back up into that general area right there. Yeah. And it, they're going to unload right there in the park, and, and it's going to be during non-business hours late at night. And the retail portion will be on this side, where yeah. people like me would go in to get yes. something. Yes. Um, I, I tend to agree with just the one, the one um, access road, mm -hmm. access point though. Um, Shaw's only has one right there, and they certainly have more traffic than th this place mm -hmm. is going to have. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's too bad. The um, I do like the design of the building, and I wish it somehow you could have put it closer to the road. So mm -hmm. instead of having the whole, yeah. the whole front end, <clears throat> just. Um, paved parking area, you know? And even, I, though you're, even though you're going to reduce the number of spaces you want, you know? Yeah, you I, I agree, but once you move it forward, that takes away all of the room for parking because then you don't have enough room to get the parking out back because you're up against a, a 50 foot, I believe it's a 50 foot front setback and a front landscape setback. So there's a couple of restrictions up in the front. So we're allowed to work within the 50 foot building setback for the parking, but not the building, so we kind of lose a lot of room for parking once we move it up. Okay. So <laughs> mm -hmm. All set? Thank you, Roger. Um, so, you know, I, I think I agree with my colleagues here. I think the one curb cut is, is definitely more desirable here. It, would there be, um, <coughs> and, and I know that's the existing curb cut where it, it lies right now, is, yeah. would there be an effort, you think, to perhaps try to align it a little bit better with uh, Meineke? the entryway 
so I looked at that today after I read Jamel's comments, and lining it up with the Monarchy gets the curb cut about 50 feet to the left over there, and it gets into a portion of the site where there's not much room to maneuver a tractor trailer. So it gets really difficult, especially with one curb cut, to try to get a tractor trailer into the site, get to the overhead door area, and then back out through. So we're, we're, trying, we're trying to make this, it, we need to have the larger <coughs> tractor trailer, WB67 trailer, get in there during non-business hours. <coughs> and two curb cuts would, would certainly make that maybe an option, but going with one curb cut certainly makes that very difficult. Appreciate that. Um, chairman suffers from poor eyesight. Does that, what's on that side elevation? I can't read what that description is under the, looks like almost like another bay door or garage door on the side elevation. Uh, up, up. That one. Uh, next to the entry door. What is that next to it? Is that just a set of windows? I it's just a, That's just a set of windows. Yeah. That's not a, okay. I didn't know if that was going to be another potential bay for tractor trailer use or something in inventory. Um, the other question I had is, if you're going to reduce, if we, if we did look at this and reduce the number of parking spots required, where would you be removing those? Would it be where the curb, second curb cut is in that area? And would that allow for perhaps some extra landscape buffering? And to, to be honest with you, I'll probably need to evaluate stormwater and drainage direction because uh, ideally I'd like it all to drain as sheet flow and stretches of shallow concentrated flow without the need for a closed drainage system. So if, if depends, currently the site pretty much drains in the southerly direction. So there may be a need to expand an area for an underdrain soil filter. So I might want to lose some parking spaces if you're looking at the plan to the right, or if the drainage naturally wants to flow to, in the west direction, there's certainly an opportunity there to eliminate those. Okay. All right, and then. Um I think this is kind of an interesting, uh, based on maybe an earlier discussion, but the fact that we potentially can reduce the size of parking in this, and this is going to be based on their experience of what you guys need um, or you feel you need out there. Um, and I guess it also has the added benefit of the reducing impervious surface. So, yes. um, do you feel like if you were to reduce the 24 um, parking spaces, that that would be sufficient for your retail operations? Well, I'll have to talk with. Patco construction about what the need actually is. Okay. All right. Um, as far as everything else, I'll, I'll concur with Roger. I think that's a, an attractive design. Um, so I appreciate Napa doing the extra effort there to try to get our architectural Thank you. Uh, style up in town. So I appreciate that. Uh, I do not have any have any other comments here. Does anyone else have anything to add on to? All right. <coughs> Appreciate your time here tonight. We look forward to seeing this again when it comes back. So does the curb cut in the westerly side of the site, does that appear to meet, although it doesn't necessarily meet the standards that Jamel pointed out, it is in the exact same spot as the current curb cut? Is the board generally okay with that? From, from my understanding from the comments, I think generally we were, okay. we were okay with an existing curb cut. Okay. Uh, I, just, I just want to make note that you know really will be predicated upon their traffic study and the, knowing what the counts are. We have to understand what the coordination is with Meineke across the street that had to put a, a left-hand turn pocket in. So I think it's, it's difficult, <coughs> not to speak for the board, but it's difficult for staff to provide, uh, you know, but I think at least in a general indication, it sounds like the board is okay, but there's a lot, you know, that doesn't necessarily, you know, there's a lot of information yet to be come right. forward to uh, make that a final determination. I just think it's worth noting that. We, I do have a traffic memo for it, but I will have our traffic engineer specifically address the location of the mm -hmm. curb cut relative to minor key and any other potential issues around that. Yeah, appreciate that. We'll uh, look forward to that in the next submission. And Thank you. Right, Thank you. All right. I am approaching 9 o'clock. It's two hours of hard labor here. We're going to take a five minute recess. <laughs> right <on. clears throat>
I do.
Are you guys ready to reconvene? Sure thing. Just gossiping about Tom Brady getting eaten. Patriots. Next item of business is Magenta LLC requests a site inventory and analysis review as part of the planned development project for 40 Hygus Parkway, Assessor's Map R50, Lot 35. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This project is also located in the Hygus Parkway zone, uh, located along the western side of the parkway, uh, just, just north of where the fitness center was proposed a few items before. So the applicant was last in front of the board for a sketch plan review. Uh, and they're in front of the board tonight for a site inventory and analysis review. This and a master plan review are required for projects located in this zoning district that would include five or more acres. Just a quick reminder that the site inventory and analysis is intended to pro provide the applicant, board, and staff with a better understanding of the overall site and opportunities and constraints that the natural and built environment create for the development of the site. The review tonight does not result in the formal approval or denial of the application. The board should be sure to determine if the information provides a clear understanding of the site and identifies opportunities and constraints that will guide the utilization of the site. Staff has found that the applicant has generally satisfied the requirements and the applicant should discuss the areas that are unsuitable for development with the board tonight and how these areas will be utilized going forward. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Mr. Bushy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Steve Bushy with Stantec here on behalf of Valentine Development. With me is Carrie Anderson as well. And uh, we've submitted to you uh, inventory analysis consisting of a number of uh, uh, aerial overlay figures with information describing the site, uh, a boundary topo survey, and uh, uh, other data regarding this property. It's a six acre property, a little over six acres, along uh, the westerly side of Hygis Parkway, and as we outlined in our sketch plan to you folks here a while back. Uh, this piece of property is a, a long linear style property and uh, that in itself, that characteristic uh, makes it uh, probably unique uh, for certain development and in this case the idea uh, that we uh, have been looking at has been the idea of putting in a number of smaller buildings to take advantage of uh, the site area. But to give you a, a brief background here and I appreciate the that the staff has pulled up uh, the larger plan, which is kind of the summary plan here uh, for those who are looking uh, from the television here. And I'll go through some of the information that is conveyed in this particular map, but just to give you a sense of positioning again here, going from Route 1 side here to the south on Highest Parkway up to Payne Road and the uh, Tabellas and Turnpike Interchange area. Uh, the large area that's under construction just to the north of us is the residential project. Uh, just east of us is certainly the, the Downs project, and these aerial images certainly aren't the most recent, but they're giving you a, a general sense of uh, the lay of the land, so to speak. Uh, I'm not as familiar. You folks are very familiar, I'm sure, with uh, the Downs pieces, but the importance of the Downs uh, that I raise is um, we've been talking with uh, their representatives about their plans to have a Hygis entrance and driveway. We'd like to ultimately uh, make use of that, coincide, and, and work with them as to their uh, access conditions on, on the Hygis. Uh, my last discussions with uh, Dan Bacon, uh, representing the Downs Group, was that they were uh, investigating the uh, installation and construction of a roundabout here on Hygis Parkway. So, not sure how much of that has been necessarily conveyed to you folks, but ultimately that may uh, play into the role of how our site on the other side of the road uh, will get worked out. So again, this property has a long amount of frontage here. Uh, the depth on the very south end is only about 150 feet, but it does broaden out so that we have an area more or less in the middle here that's about 250 feet deep, about 200 feet deep. Uh, on this sideline here up against the residential piece. The site is generally wooded on the northerly two-thirds, and this area here is a meadow area that, as you're going along Hygis, I'm guessing at some point in time, uh, this area had been perhaps wooded, and uh, from what we have found out doing some geotechnical investigations, uh, that was probably dug out and probably some good material had been removed and some more poorer material was uh, placed here. So that's why it's a bit of a meadow now and not uh, some trees. 
because of that, that makes it a little less desirable to do much on this southerly end of the site, uh, given some of those uh, soils that were put back there, some clay and stumps and that type of thing. But it also turns out that given the narrowness of this area, probably less likely and adaptable to be putting building space. So we're going to ultimately take advantage, we hope, of the more northerly two-thirds of the property. The site, like many of the others here along Hygis, certainly is benefited by uh, the utilities that are there. We have water line that is on the westerly side of Hygis along our frontage, so as buildings are built out on our property, we could have both fire and domestic water supply easily enough. It's a 12-inch water main that's uh, along Hygis there today. Sanitary sewer benefits from the existing pump station here on Hygis. We have gravity lines that serve this property here, and in fact, the uh, gravity sewer, sanitary sewer, gravity going up to the pump station, then a force main coming back along Hygis that ultimately converts and transitions back to a gravity line that goes over to Route 1. There is a sewer service stub that was installed across the road, which makes it very ideal for us, uh, understanding that that stub was installed for the benefit of not only this property, uh, but maybe others in the future here. But we have the ability to tie into that on any of our development area that I'll describe a little bit more here in a bit uh, to be able to tie into this sanitary sewer service. We have uh, power utilities and communications that are also located along Hygis as well as natural gas. So all of those, unlike a lot of other properties, um, you don't always have the ability and opportunity to tie into what uh, really readily available utility services here. The site is, as the staff have noted, tributary to a, uh, a stream that crosses underneath via a culvert underneath the Hygis uh, Parkway and ultimately drains into a tributary, unnamed tributary that I'm aware of unless the staff can tell me that there's a particular name for this tributary. I have always understood that Mill Creek is the next uh, tributary <coughs> to the north, maybe Angela can correct me on that, but this is an unnamed tributary that does flow down through the Enterprise Business Park and makes its way across over into the Nuntouch River. So in understanding all of that though, that watershed we know is part of uh, the town and DEP's review of a watershed that is considered threatened and uh, as would be the norm, we're certainly going to be looking at uh, complying with all of the uh, state regulations as well as lo local regulations for stormwater management, uh, full compliance with Chapter 500 regulations, uh, certainly. So uh, we feel good about that and that our drainage uh, will be going to this existing culvert underneath the, the Hygis. Now, the southerly end of the site, one of the little challenges besides the soils and the narrowness uh, that I mentioned is that this end here is a little bit on the low end, and in fact, if we were to do much on the uh, southerly end of the site, we would be challenged a little bit with some stormwater issues and that we couldn't get the water or stormwater runoff from this area to get up to this culvert crossing underneath Hygis Parkway. So today, this area generally seems to um, basically just infiltrate, which is not necessarily too surprising given that there's a lot of sand in this area. Uh, but we're not looking to do much on the south end of the site, so we wouldn't be impacting uh, the current stormwater regime in that area, either off of uh, the roadway or the driveway that currently goes out behind the property here and in, in between the, the ponds uh, to the private residence here uh, to the west of us. So um, we're going to focus on the northerly end, and in doing so, we can make sure that we, one, have the means to be able to collect, convey stormwater, run it through treatment systems, flood controls and the like, and then discharge to uh, this culvert crossing underneath the parkway. Um, the other main site features, topography. We had Owen Haskell do our boundary and topographic survey. There is some relief, the middle of the sites, the highest area. So here's the parkway. We have the residence over to the west of us. The culvert that I was just referencing is located right over here. 
has some high ground here, and it drops down to a lower area over on this side here. Uh, so this area, we have done soils work, and very good soils uh, are located here in the higher ground, so happy about that. Um, so that will be fully supportive of any building traditional foundations. We wouldn't foresee the need for any uh, special foundations like piles or preloading or otherwise, uh, unlike some of the other properties. As I understand it, the residential development there just to the north, they had some special foundations. Uh, they may have had some uh, piles, but um, I think they may have done some preloading up on that side as well because of soft clays. We're fortunate enough here that uh, we've got good granular soils, sands and gravels, and uh, in fact, based on what we're thinking about ultimately for buildings, uh, that would be relatively <coughs> short in height, probably just single story, might be high bay type buildings, uh, but not much more than 25 or 30 feet. We're you know, fairly modest relative to building loads. So all key to basically supporting traditional building co type construction with concrete foundations. The other key element to the property is that it has a control of access and right here is the uh, currently defined break in control of access that was made as part of the Haggis Parkway uh, right-of-way uh, development however long ago that was. I don't remember when Haggis was built. Was that sometime in the 80s, I want to say? I think it was in the 90s. 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 Yeah. So uh, it is a bit of a control of access, and I'm guessing you've heard about some of the other properties uh, that have that. Uh, the Downs across the street is, similarly has those controls, and both the Downs and, and uh, our side of things, we're going to be looking to go to the DOT to modify where those control of access points are. We both feel confident that the DOT will allow a new break We'll have to close where we currently have uh, an access point here. It's just interesting uh, to know or understand where the, uh, the history of all of that was. It's coincidental, I suppose, the department, main DOT, owned the property previously. And I surmise that uh, that control uh, break here allowed them to go in and remove some material and put back in some poorer material as probably part of a, another project someplace, a DOT's project uh, someplace. So we're going to end up moving this control for the uh, access location northerly. As we get northerly, uh, sight lines continue to be certainly fine, well over uh, in excess of 750 feet in each direction based on the speed limits. So uh, that would be desirable. Uh, how we work our driveway in the event that uh, this location here for the downs does ultimately become a roundabout. Um, that is yet to be worked out, but we've got to, to talk with those folks and, and figure that out. One of my first questions to them was, can a private driveway uh, be located off of a roundabout? And I was given the answer that yes, it can be, so that's a positive there. I'm <coughs> uh, confident then that we should be able to work something out as far as access conditions. <coughs> so, um, Jamel, if you could bring up that last plan that you had there. A uh, couple of the staff comments also related to uh, contacting um, the agencies. So Inland Fisheries and Wildlife and uh, Maine Historic Preservation Office. We did contact both of those and we do have correspondence from both of those. Maine Historic Preservation Office found that the site contained no historic properties uh, that they're aware of. Um, so that's, that's good. There weren't any old houses or farms on the property. Uh, grave sites or otherwise, which on a couple of sites here in Scarborough, uh, in my past time, I have had uh, properties that had some grave sites on them, so that was of concern, but not on this particular property, so that's good. Main IFNW also responded that there were no uh, particular species uh, or um, uh, fish and wildlife of interest to them. They made comments, though, to two things, one of which is becoming more and more common. You probably have heard it. It's about uh, the fact that we're within an area of uh, bat migration, and so they're concerned about uh, tree clearing uh, on a seasonal basis in the event that uh, this site or any site here might be a roosting area 
don't suspect, given the lack of uh, large trees, because most of the trees here on the property are pretty small, so I would expect that they're probably not much more than 20 years of 20 or 30 years of age. There's no really big pine trees or anything like that that are commonly looked at as being the possible uh, roosting area. So we're uh, not feeling that there's any particular concerns on that, uh, any more so than the fact that a bald eagle does fly over the site, just like it does every place else, and the agencies are uh, typically, they'll say, there are bald eagles. So um, they also made a comment about uh, the tributary as it crosses uh, the parkway and into Mill Creek. And they uh, uh, offered that as a tributary to Mill Creek, having a 100-foot setback from the stream would be uh, recommended on their part. We need that because the stream is more than 100 feet off of, uh, our property already. So. Uh, it's not really applicable to us in terms of what we would be doing. We, we're meeting, or we would meet setbacks uh, regardless on the property for uh, our buildable area, and uh, we would also meet the 100 foot setback because the stream is more than 100 feet from our property already. So uh, that's a positive as that is concerned. Wetlands, we did have identified and mapped by uh, Mark Hampton, and uh, unfortunately, our imagery here and the graphics that we gave you neglected to necessarily show them that wetlands predominantly though are actually located just off of the road more or less kind of in the drainage ditch they do extend up into the property within the 25 foot area that we would be keeping as an undisturbed buffer which is required as part of the zone anyway so uh, looking to avoid any wetland impact per se uh, as well so that's a positive piece. Uh, other than that, there are no vernal pools or other particular resource uh, issues with the, with the property. Again, it really boils down to the fact that it's a, just a long, narrow piece uh, that um, makes a little bit more of a challenge in looking at it for one, larger buildings or otherwise. Uh, right now, uh, our planning, as shown here over on the right, really is looking at and focusing uh, on uh, basically a series of three buildings and ultimately when we come back before you folks for site plan approval which is uh, what we hope to be our, our next step we really are only looking at a single building to start with because it's driven by tenant demand and right now we're you know seeking out tenants and uh, we feel like we have uh, uh, one right now that would be very worthy of trying to get this building under construction as soon as we absolutely could uh, but the other buildings would be in the future and our expectation would be that, uh, that we would come back to you folks for uh, an amended approval if and when these future buildings might happen. Now, the, the uh, gist of this site area, though, and we can get to it if you'd like to. If you want to stay focused on site inventory, I'm happy enough to do that. But just wanted to give you a, a general sense of kind of where we are at and based on what I've told you here about the site depth and uh, the uh, limitations relative to just site geometry, the, the parcel area, uh, we're looking at a development opportunity from our perspective of something a little less than about four acres of development area. Um, so that would be the buildings, parking lots, and the like. And uh, that would keep us certainly within the highest zoning standards relative to building coverage in impervious area. And uh, also from my perspective, not really burden the land all that much and really is a function of the fact that that southerly third of the property is a little less desirable. Uh, that would be uh, left undeveloped. So uh, ultimately, we think with multiple buildings here, the ability to tie into utility services is great, uh, a single access point how we configure that ultimately in working with the downs, I think is uh, got a little work to do, but certainly it's a positive that there will be development on the other side as well, so we feel comfortable about that. Uh, the fact that the resource issues are pretty minimal for the property is a positive. <coughs> soils issues are, uh, this, it, you know, it's got good soils on it, uh, as opposed to other sites here in, in Scarborough that are often uh, uh, made ch a challenge with soft clay soils. Uh, the fact that we have drainage uh, that we can discharge to, albeit we'll need to put in compliant stormwater management systems. My expectation right now, based on the uh, layout here of this paved area and buildings and so forth, that we'd have a number, and I think this is trending towards 
how the, the objectives and goals of the stormwater management uh, law are, but we'd have a number of smaller uh, basins uh, along the perimeters here to uh, provide either rain gardens, a combination of rain gardens and biocells, uh, preferably rain gardens so that we're not putting uh, a lot of water in these small areas and they can have a little bit more robust planting plan and look a little bit more <coughs> naturalized along the edges. Uh, from what I saw from the climbing gym and the other building just south of that, it looks as though you know they maintained a lot of the existing vegetation along the parkway that's probably just outside their boundary, just like we have here. Uh, they had some supplemental amount of plantings, a few evergreen trees, and I know that in one spot, I think at the, at the climbing gym uh, might be the transformer pad. Uh, surprisingly, didn't have as much as I thought it probably needed to have for some uh, plantings and screening, but we would certainly be looking to uh, improve upon that with our frontage here, and this particular graphic is uh, giving a <coughs> suggestion here of what we were trying to achieve. Besides the existing trees that would be maintained along the parkway and the 25-foot setback area here, we do have a couple areas, and I may have suggested this or talked about it a little bit at the sketch plan side, is that within the 25-foot area, we'd like to put some rain garden areas for the stormwater management. But along those rain garden areas, we would do some supplemental planting uh, for both trees, evergreens, as well as low-lying stuff around, around the rain gardens to, to make those a little bit more robust and make up for what amount of, of uh, small tree growth that might be uh, cut to make way for that, that stormwater management measure. So that's the, the gist of the site relative to describing its background, its uh, advantages. Uh, frankly, the, the disadvantages of the site are, from my perspective, somewhat minimal in that it's really the depth of it at a little over 250 feet at its deepest. It's just not a really deep site that allows you to do much. But uh, running the length of the parkway, uh, if we consolidate to a single driveway, I think that's more or less meeting a normal objective. And I think I heard you just talking here in the previous application about driveway numbers and so forth. And you know, we're trying to minimize that certainly here uh, with this development by uh, just providing a, a single driveway. We're somewhat limited because that's just what the DOT would give us anyway uh, based on the control of access on, on the parkway. Um, and then the other typical routine site plan pieces I think would all fall into play relatively uh, normally. Site lighting and uh, buffering certainly I think we'd need to pay attention closely here to buffering on the westerly side, recognizing that there is a residence uh, to the west of us, even though it is in the Parkway Zoning District, uh, as that land use is a little bit more sensitive. We'd be looking at uh, you know, providing as much uh, buffering as we could on the back side of the, the buildings here to uh, counteract that a little bit. So with that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very board. much. Um, we do have opportunity for public comment on this. If there's anyone here from the public that would like to speak, please approach the podium. <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Um, and just for our benefit, we're just uh, we're at the site inventory and analysis part of this. Um, you know, I, I know they touched on probably some master planning elements and some site plan elements to this, but I think as a board, just keep in mind that we're really here to kind of give him some direction as to whether or not we feel the land use is um, you know, based on what's there is being used appropriately <coughs> in human fashion. So yeah. with that said, Roger, would you like to start us off? Sure. <coughs> Um, well, breaking news tonight, uh, the roundabout. <laughs> yeah. um, that should be interesting if, if that ever evolves. Um, but I, um, I applaud you for um, wanting to try and coordinate with the, uh, with the Downs property in terms of the, the you know, access up, up the parkway. Um, I, I understand, I mean, it, you, you're limited as to what you could do there because of the size. Uh, I don't have any other, any further questions other than I just make a comment, and I know it doesn't pertain to the but I I mentioned this at the last time it was before us. Um, this is a very visible site, and there's some very attractive projects going on around it, and I just hope that ultimately when the design of these buildings go up, it, it blends in properly and appropriately with what else is going up there. But otherwise, I, I don't have 
any any other questions at this point. I think you're doing as much as you can do with this land, this this parcel. So. Thank you, Roger. Robin? Um, a couple of things, I guess. Um, there's an there's a problem with uh, flooding upstream or along Payne Road, kind of a thing. And I w I just was wondering if any consideration had been given to, um, I guess, floodplain analysis, you know, flooding maps, that type of thing, to see if there's, um, you know, as far as land use is concerned and making sure that we're not in a high high risk area. So uh, are we yep. talking kind of up in that area? Yep, yep. Okay, and so toward the intersection. Got it, okay. And the, you know, sort of clear choice in those areas and that area, so. I will work with the town engineer Good. a little bit to get a better handle on what's going on there. Um, another thought to Steve is flowing sands in that area. Have, have, I, know, I know that you only went to like 10 or 15 feet below ground kind of a thing, but, um, and knowing that we're in the aquifer, this is still in the aquifer protection zone. Correct. Yeah. And um, flowing sands as far as structural geotechnical analysis is concerned, but also understanding <clears throat> whatever stormwater features are being used that um, sometimes we do ask in aqu aquifer protection zones. And I, I know I'm getting into sort of sketch plan ideas here too, is, is lining those kind of a thing so that we don't have, right. you know, any cross-contamination elements, that type of thing. Um, making sure too that like New England cottontail has been evaluated too. Was I think it was the across eye. the street maybe. Yeah, we didn't have any Good. cottontail okay. habitat there, which was... Good. Knock on wood, I was a little concerned about that because right. I never know Scarborough. <laughs> right, I know. I was surprised that there wasn't any there. Um, the wetland uh, delineation, um, I guess I, I would just for my own like to see a little more on that kind of a thing because I'm a little surprised that there's no vernal pool. I guess it was done in September, the wetland analysis, so that's not usually when you're able to see the vernal pool type stuff. Um, but you know we're we're basically in the headwaters of the of the Scarborough Marsh here, so that to me I think is another stone unturned in addition to the flood flooding floodplain and, and resiliency. It's all really in the name of resiliency and, and um, biodiversity. So <coughs> those are the only comments that I have, other than maybe the flowing sands and the aquifer to to think protection areas to think about. Okay. Rachel. Yeah, I, I think you've been pretty comprehensive. I, I drive by that site uh, pretty much every day. Uh, and when you had originally proposed uh, four buildings there, I wasn't clear how the fourth one was ever going to be built, given what I surmised about the, uh, the land uh, to the, um, towards the Route 1 side of the, of the pro property. Uh, I think You've done some good consideration of all of the you know, limitations on the site, on the site because of its narrowness, narrowness and the uh, dumping area or whatever uh, at the site nearest the, uh, the salt pump. pump. Um, ultimately, I'll really be looking for the landscaping. Uh, and also in terms of the, the architecture, it is visible, as, as Roger said. And, uh, I'm not sure that you know three identical buildings in a row is necessarily uh, what what we might be looking for, but I'm certainly interested in in seeing what uh, you folks come up with. Because of the openness of the site, uh, it might be interesting if you had a chance to consider uh, rooftop solar panels. If you took a look at using that site and um, the buildings there for some some good green technology uh, that, that is an opportunity there. Uh, it gets a lot of, the, lot of sunlight all year round. Um, other than that, and the interesting information about the roundabout, um, I have no more questions. Appreciate the work you've done there. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Gosh, I hope I didn't let the cat out of the bag as to the, the downs. I thought it was public knowledge to a certain extent. And for all I know, maybe that plan is... Uh, it's gone viral already. Right. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll just follow up. Um, 
and I agree that uh, with my colleagues here, I appreciate the efforts to coordinate with the Downs property on this. Um, I think that shows you know some good foresight here for the future planning of this site, um, and as well as I think you're also heading in the right direction um, as far as the, what you've kind of zeroed in on there for an overall plan. It's, it's, an, it's headed in the right direction. So I don't have a whole lot else to add from what you've already heard here tonight. So we look forward to seeing the next step. Um, and then, you know, just take the, take heed of some of the, uh, the feedback here from the board with regard to buffering and the architecture and things of that nature, storm water. So thank you very much. Next item up uh, tonight is uh, Ballantyne Development LLC requests a sketch plan review for the Eastern Village Subdivision Assessor's Map RO73, Lot 128, and proposed Lot 140. Jamel. Okay. All right, so this project's located uh, adjacent to the Eastern Village Subdivision on the tra traditional neighborhood design overlay district. The applicant's proposing to develop a property identified as Lot 128 on the approved Eastern Village subdivision plan. Currently, the applicant is proposing 84 multifamily residential units within five buildings. The applicant is also proposing to create a new lot identified as Lot 140 on the materials. Staff noted that the total net density for the property is just under 46 units as proposed. The remaining density for the Eastern Villas is just under uh, 34 units. Therefore, the applicant will need to identify how they will meet these density requirements. Staff would also like to point out that the traditional neighborhood design overlay district promotes and allows for flexible space and bulk standards. The applicant will need to propose these standards in a similar fashion as provided on the approved Eastern Village subdivision plans with a formal application. Staff would like to point out that the town has experienced some issues with the current design of the streets within Eastern Village and will work with the applicant to determine an acceptable design uh, for this project. And finally, staff has suggested that the applicant coordinate a neighborhood meeting uh, prior to the submission of a formal application to the board. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamal. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> so, um, yes, this is Lot 128 in Eastern Village. It uh, allows for a number of uh, uses, residentially, multifamily included. And we're also proposing on lot 140, which that would be a new lot number in Eastern Village, a single family lot, which is shown as lot 140. The road that would connect up from Ballantyne Drive up to Ward Street, we're proposing as a town road. And we would work with uh, staff to find out a acceptable uh, design there um, if it's something that's other than what is in currently Eastern Village. We'd like to keep the right of way the same. The road that goes up through there has sidewalks on both sides. We'd like to keep it walkable, but if there's something along the lines of curbing or whatnot, we'd be, we'd be, uh, we'd be open to that. Uh, what we also have is, as uh, Jamel has mentioned, five buildings. The smaller buildings would be 12 unit buildings. The two larger buildings would be 24 unit buildings. And what's also spread around the site are garages. <coughs> Largest would be four unit garages and they go down to two unit garages. Along with that, uh, the comment about the density, Eastern Village enjoys a density factor that was approved uh, years ago for um, frac fractionalizing the density. In other words, if we have one dwelling unit, we can make it two uh, as long as we stay within 750 square feet or under. And 0.66 dwelling unit if it's two bedrooms and up to 1,200 square feet. The units that are proposed are 61 bedroom and 24 two bedroom, which I submitted a net res uh, calculation not sure if staff got that or not, but it did summarize how that how that uh, net res was calculated. Um, in addition to that, um, we'd be providing analysis for uh, the traffic uh, as part of uh, the traffic movement permit we have for the project, and also stormwater. This particular area here was calculated in the 
<coughs> uh, stormwater watershed for <coughs> Eastern Village and the pond that was built down to the bottom of Eastern Village down along Eastern Road uh, takes into account this watershed area and based on some numbers that we were working with, with the number of lots in there and the area that was allowed for the single families, we believe the impervious area that we're showing here is less than what would, uh, would have otherwise been in there. But we'd provide, obviously, an analysis and a more formal application. What we also here have submitted is just uh, one of the larger buildings, 24-unit building. It's essentially a federal style architecture, kind of in keeping with what you see down in South Village now, if you happen to see those buildings that are being built down there. And the smaller buildings, which kind of the same thing. Um, there's a lot of windows in these buildings. We are trying to, one of the things that people have expressed uh, about South Village versus some of the other projects that they're looked at is the amount of light that we have in the units. We do put in a lot of windows, so you'll notice there's a lot of fenestration to them. Um, in addition to that, we're also proposing a dog park, two dog parks actually, side by side, one for smaller dogs, one for larger dogs. Mm -hmm. That's been something that has been asked uh, not only by the neighborhood, but also by people who are moving into South Village, along with a uh, walking path that would be potential future road connecting up from Classical Way up to Ward Street. Uh, we're not proposing to build that now. We would be potentially looking to build that in the future. So we want to get that on the plan so that there's no um, uh, misunderstanding as far as where there would potentially be a road later on. We have had a neighborhood meeting prior to uh, coming before the board here. And uh, the comments that came from the neighborhood uh, were, there really weren't any negative comments. We did have a couple of people that uh, abut up to the project along Ballantyne and also Inspiration that uh, asked if we would take a look at um, trying to locate uh, some of the parking areas and building areas uh, a little uh, further back, as well as not connecting up between uh, a couple of lots where there was a, uh, there's a future road connection that we're not proposing at this time. The plan you see before you now has those uh, amendments made to, it, with the changes that we made in, in trying to address a couple of the neighbors' concerns. Other than that, there is water, sewer, stormwater, <coughs> gas uh, stubbed into all ends of the property. Uh, the entrance coming off of Ballantyne Drive, the one coming off of Inspiration, the one coming off of Classical, and there is water and storm coming off of uh, Ward Street. Uh, no sewer, we'd be extending the sewer up to that area if we were gonna go that way, uh, or we'd go off of Ballantyne or off of inspiration, but there's utilities basically all around the site that have been set up for the development of this area. Um, in addition to that, um, I really don't have anything else to add except I wanted to come before the board, get your uh, comments, feedback, uh, before we get <coughs> into a site plan drawing, and uh, uh, obviously I'd be looking to work with Steve Bushy, who's here before me tonight on the prior uh, agenda item. So um, he's hung around to hear what the comments and concerns are. And uh, that's about all I have. Thank you very much. Um, Rachel, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, I, I'm looking at, at the plans here. I, I noticed the, the dog parks that you mentioned and the gravel walkways. Are you looking at any other areas of um, gathering for in terms of placemaking, gathering spaces, anything else? We are looking at that right now. Uh, I don't have any location set up for you, which set up right now for you, but we are looking at that, yes. Uh, there appears to be a lot of wetlands uh, attached to the property, so I assume that what you're presenting to us is pretty much it for the, in terms of the development of this lot. That That's you, correct. You have no future thoughts. Not on this particular part of the parcel that you hear, see here, no. What we are looking to do is avoid the wetlands as best we can. We're not showing any impacts. 
It's about a 13 acre. The, the larger part of the site is close to 20 acres, but what you see here is about 13 acres, and we're looking to put these, uh, these units on the 13 acres built around those wetlands, but not impacting any of those wetlands. Is there going to be affordable housing apartments included with this? So there, was, there will not be any proposed affordable housing. We do have a in-lieu fee that we would propose to pay to the town for the remaining 10 units, uh, approximately 20000 per unit. So we would look to pay the town $200,000 uh, with the project. Uh, just a, a question out of pure curiosity. Um, how are you going to allocate the uh, garage spaces? Well, we've had a lot of people who have asked about garages, and we don't want to build, you know, eight garage doors or nine garage doors long, double-sided, which become big buildings and whatnot. So. We're trying to intersperse them as best we can around the site. It would really kind of be as a first-come basis, but clearly we wouldn't rent somebody a garage halfway down the site if they were looking at renting into Building A. Uh, we've put them around the site as best we can and how they fit into the context, but there's less garages than there are units, clearly. That's uh, all the questions. <coughs> Thank you. Robin. Yeah, what are your, um, and I apologize, it's getting late, Carrie, so I apologize if you already spoke sure. to this, but um, what are your intentions as far as stormwater management is concerned? Are you going to do uh, localized, or are you going to try to do a, one central large infiltration gallery or detention pond kind of a thing? Can you just talk, or, you know, will it be closed curb and gutter, or will it be open? Can you just talk a little bit about what you think it might be? I really don't have the expertise to talk too far about that. Um, obviously, I'm familiar with sheet flow versus uh, point discharge. Um, we're trying to keep the buildings close to the street for context purposes. And I'm not opposed to sheet discharge, sheet flow rather, um, but it makes it difficult unless you have building set back to try and get that as well as having a sidewalk along with it. Mm -hmm. um, Are you trying to tie into the towns or extend the towns sort of like curb and gutter storm drain uh, down through there where it'll be a, a town road or do you think it will be above ground ditches? So we have right now the requirement to continue the road section on lot 128 that you see down through Eastern Village. Um, I'm not, I'm open to what can be done. I just don't know what can be done. And I'm also not experienced enough in stormwater. I'm not an engineer to be able to go too far down that road with you. Um, but I understand, I think, the point of the question and that point discharge being probably less uh, popular than, say, sheet flow. I just don't know what we can do given the context of the buildings and trying to keep them close to the street. We have the requirement for curb and catch basin. And Maybe I'm, that can be changed, but I, I, yeah. I don't know what can yeah, be done. Yeah, I'm just sort of thinking more too, like low impact development, if there'll be any sort of low, like maintaining the natural hydrology and trying to minimize the sort of concentration of stormwater as much as possible. And it really goes hand in hand with the quality work that, that you're doing down in Eastern Village. So I would just ask that you maybe think about it and talk about it with Steve, who's very much, you know, adept at that kind of thing. So. Sure. I mean, the good news is we have the land to do it. Exactly. I mean, there is land yeah. area that's, that's you know, um, south yep. of the, that's a, that's a north-south yeah. kind of, the road kind of goes northeast, southwest, but there is plenty of land south of the building. Exactly, and if you're preserving the wetlands, if the wetlands are in that general area, maybe just <coughs> extending it a little bit to have a nice stormwater buffer, which really enhances open space and those types of things, those concepts that you've, um, I think you've, you've 
would, would blend nicely with, with your, um, your neighborhood in that area. Sure. And that's, that's really all I have for this evening. <coughs> Best okay. of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think this looks uh, pretty interesting. Um, can, I, can I assume that this is going to be similar to what you're doing down in South Village? In, in terms of the, these are rentals, these are going to be rentals? Yes, they're all uh, proposed to be rented. We are setting them up so that they can be condominium in the future, uh, but uh, they would be rental now. And the only thing I can say about this project versus South Village is South Village, I would say, is kind of more conventional driven and that there's a lot of units on a um, small area that doesn't have a lot. I mean, there's sidewalks within South Village, but you're really walking in between the buildings. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is parking. What you have on this particular site here is a road <coughs> system that takes you from the neighborhood eventually up to the center of town that has sidewalks on both sides. So I think this is more, um, I think it'll be more pleasing to people who live there. I think it'll be more pleasing to uh, context if you're, uh, you're talking about placemaking or things along those lines. So, um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to have kind of pods that come off of the road that go down to a, a separate building and then we're, we're trying to keep the street as alive as we can. Sure, uh, but the buildings primarily I going to be very similar to what you have down at South Village? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there'll be three-story, <coughs> um, yes. Because um, when you were before us for that, you were talking about amenities such as you're going to have a building for uh, like packages being delivered and uh, things like that. And you, at one time, you even talked about uh, car charger, auto charging stations. I don't know if you've sort of abandoned that idea. No, we haven't. Uh, we do have a post office that uh, we're building down in <coughs> South Village. We're trying to figure out where the best location for one up here is. Uh, we also um, are looking at um, a bike shop. We have a lot of people who have uh, leased down to South Village that are, um, I don't want to say they're coming just because of the trail, but it's an amenity that they're taking advantage of. So we will be making a submission to come before you for South Village to amend the site plan to add a, a, a bicycle shop that will hold you know, like 60 bikes. We're looking at doing that up here as well. This having a dark park, uh, we've, that's actually garnered more interest than I thought it would have. I thought being in a neighborhood and being on the trail that people would want to, you know, take advantage of walking their dog more that way, but there's a big off-leash uh, thing that's big now, and uh, this will be something that not only can be for North Village, but also can be for people in South Village and Eastern Village if they want to bring their dogs up here and let them loose within a, within a confined area. Okay, speaking about the dog park, I, I noticed on, on your, your plans here, your sketch, you have gravel walking path. Can, um, can you put a gravel walking path in without, doesn't have to, once you have a path like that, doesn't have to be ADA compliance? I don't know. I'll find out. I think it might have to be. Um, and, and if it is, then you'd have to maybe do something with the uh, potential future road connection. Um, yes. But I, um, I like that idea that you can bring, um, you know, you have a path there. Um, and the, let me ask the staff uh, on the road, are we going to run into any similar problems that we ran into with the downs on that first phase with the, turn, with the turns, the radi radii, remember with that whole issue? Are we going to have a problem there with this? We'll have to take a look at the details, I okay. suppose. I All guess right. that was why Jamel in his outset sort of said we want to be sure we have a, we sort of fully vet that before a formal application we, comes forward. Yeah. We, we realize we'd have to meet auto turn radiuses for fire trucks and, and whatnot, yeah. okay. so we're, we're aware of that. Um, and, and the only thing, uh, other thing I would say is um, Jamal mentioned um, on the town road, um, putting in a T right there. 
you know, if you're not going to, if you're not going to finish off the proposed connector road. That, that's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's I'm just mentioning it because I want to make your mom feel good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but otherwise, oh, one last question, Kerry. Um, when, when people were buying into this development to start with, did they have any idea that, that you had plans for something like this in this particular lot? Or was, was this just a blank, blank piece of land? I never committed to anybody anything. I told them it was residentially zoned. Anything that we would do would have to come before the board. We'd obviously have to meet the town standards. Um, I really have had no idea what I would do until probably the last three months. Okay. I'm all set. Thank you, Roger. So um, I'll, I'll kind of piggyback on a little bit of that. I think the town road is um, going to be an important part of this, um, just based on feedback we've had from residents out there and with the staff in the town has also dealt with, with plowing and movement out there, so uh, paying attention to the widths. Is it your intention to maybe have some off-street off parking on that road? On this particular road here? Yeah. No. No. And I ask only because I'm a little bit concerned about um, the number of parking spaces. You you have, you know, you clearly outlined that you, you have minimum standard to meet, and that's exactly how much you're proposing. And the reason I bring that up, especially um, in the sense that some of these are garages, what I've, my experience is that some people will use garage as a storage space rather than a car parking spot. And I think... Um, where do these people go once they start renting here? Where do they put their car if it's full? And I think that's something to keep in mind as you go forward is where, is there an overflow lot? You know, um, something in particular that will help ease some of that parking burden out there, especially if there's no street access for or, or on street parking. And then um, kind of on that same vein, on the dog park, is that a little subs is that like a parking area for people who are going to the dog park, or is that just an extension of the parking spaces for the units themselves? It's an extension. Okay. Yeah. We wouldn't, incidentally, we wouldn't let people use uh, their garage spaces for storage. That's not the intent. We have had people have asked about storage, but um, that would be strictly for vehicular. We would, there's insurance reasons why you, you don't want to go down that road. Um, but, uh, but the other thing I'd say is I believe our, our parking uh, numbers that we have, when you include the spaces that are outlined as well as the garages, I think we meet the standard that the town's asked for. That's not to say that we don't need to do more. I'm just saying that I believe we've met the standard with the plan you see before you. Yeah, and the, yeah, that was, uh, you, you've definitely, you know, you've hit minimum. Um, and, and I think it'd be worthwhile to think about an overflow space somewhere in here or sure. at least um, a designated area for proposed um, future parking expansion, if necessary. Um, you know, because you do want them to have a nice experience out there. It's going to help you in the long run to have a nice experience for those people that rent or, or live out there. So yeah. uh, just keep that in mind as well. Um, you know, I, I know you said you had a neighborhood meeting. I think some of those, um, you know, details of when, where, what was discussed, I think that would be helpful too, just to see you know, what that conversation's like out there. Um, I think it helps you as much as it helps us. Um, and then I, I think we're also uh, looking forward to seeing that, res you know, the density calculation. Um, I don't, I don't, I suspect that Steph hadn't quite seen it yet, and we certainly haven't yet. But, um, other than that, um, it's pretty good. So I'll leave it there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number 14, Patriot Realty Saco LLC requests a site plan review as part of a contract zone proposed for 1000 Hygus Parkway, Assessor's Map RO52, Lot 5. You're now. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. This project is also located in the Haggis Parkway Zoning District and also a proposed contract zone at the intersection of Payne Road and Haggis Parkway. So the applicant is proposing a 21,265 square foot motor vehicle sales repair and service facility and is seeking preliminary approval this evening. The applicant was last before this board in November. Um, and at that meeting, members requested additional details and graphics of how the site would look as viewed from the adjacent public ways. 
The applicant has provided these graphics. However, they do not appear to be consistent <coughs> with the landscape plan. Staff suggests that the final submission materials ensure consistency between the renderings and the landscape plans. Also, since November, uh, staff and the town's <coughs> traffic consultant met with the uh, development team to discuss the location for the proposed driveway along Highgus Parkway. To this end, the applicant has relocated the driveway uh, further south in order to meet the town's standards for driveway separation. The applicant should be sure to discuss uh, this review element with the board tonight. This, the town standards seek to have larger parking areas broken up with plantings and landscaping. Uh, staff continues to recommend that the applicant break up the parking lot as a measure to improve the runoff leaving the site and entering the Willowdale Brook watershed. The applicant has also provided details about the proposed Town of Scarborough masonry sign along the corner of the parcel. Uh, the placement of the sign will require council action, but board members are encouraged to provide feedback on the proposed design to staff and the applicant. A few more. Staff provided a host of additional review comments for the board's consideration, many of which staff is comfortable uh, with being addressed between preliminary and final action by the board. And should the board uh, be comfortable granting preliminary approval this evening, uh, the next step is for council to review the proposed contract zone agreement. Uh, the board has the opportunity to provide comments and feedback to council about the language in this agreement. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamal. <clears throat> like to introduce yourself, please. Good evening. My name is Jim Seymour. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics, representing Patriot Acura this evening. Uh, as Jamal has mentioned, uh, we were here last in late November. Uh, at that time, the board uh, reviewed our application, <coughs> and there were some concerns, or they wanted further information with regard to a few items before we could move on um, preliminary and move back to the council. Uh, those issues were mainly consisting of driveway locations and landscaping or buffering aspects as uh, it affects the um, pedestrian view on Payne and Tigers Parkway. Uh, the plan you have before you this evening, we have worked with the town's consultant, Bill Bray, and um, we looked at various locations for uh, the approach as we come off Hygis. Uh, what was ultimately considered uh, by our traffic engineers to be the safest approach would be to relocate the entrance from what we had shown earlier, approximately 200 feet further south on Hygis. Um, that extends that driveway out a little bit further but it does provide adequate turning maneuvers uh, for traffic coming off the turnpike as well as uh, approaching um, Payne Road from the south. In consultation with Mr. Bray, uh, one of the concerns was um, if we go directly across the street, uh, making sure we have adequate left turn lane area right in there, correct, uh, to approach the site. Uh, we're coming off the turnpike, it does not give us much of a cue. Uh, by moving that down further where we have located it, we can now provide both a left turn going northward into first outlook as well as kind of a shared lane for the left turn going south on Hygis into the Acura site. So overall, we felt that that was the uh, preferred location for safety that best met the town's um, requirements. The separation of the driveways does meet the standard. Uh, in working with Mr. Bray, there were some factors that he wished we added to look at various development impacts uh, over the last few years, as well as uh, factors for traffic trips generated uh, going into the future. Uh, we did provide information to Mr. Bray, but I believe he's been away, so he's not had that opportunity to look at that revised information that he requested, but it had to do with some Saturday traffic counts that we provided. Uh, additionally, um, one of the other concerns um, that you brought at the last meeting was the right in, right out on pain. Uh, our traffic engineer, Derek Caldwell, did provide a memorandum, which I believe Bill has reviewed uh, and is in general agreement with, in that that would meet um, the safety requirements um, as well, because coming off the turnpike, it would give uh, an opportunity for deliverables to go into the site making a right, basically starting at a controlled access point, going eastward on Payne Road, and they may be able to make a right, rather than going through the intersection, making a left, which is a more dangerous uh, uh, approach into the site. Furthermore, um, it, as I mentioned, it allows for much more efficient deliverables for uh, vehicle delivery with the long car carriers coming in from the other way. It's a swervy turn. 
This way we have an excellent straight approach as we've designed it into the site where we could park the carrier, not have any impacts on the street. Um, I think that if you've looked around, you've seen other car dealerships, I'm sure none that Mr. Ahrens has ever uh, worked with, uh, sometimes they have to park out on the street to unload these vehicles. That is not any ideal situation we want to have. Everything here will be unloading internally into the site. Um, with the new uh, alignment of uh, entrance on Haggis, we did have to shuffle some of the stormwater around. Uh, we moved that more towards the middle of the site. Uh, but what that entrance does, in fact, it actually provides even more buffer for the parking that's behind the building now. Uh, as you travel up along Haggis, one of the good things is there's a pretty mature growth of mixed um, maples, birches, pines. Uh, there's, a, there's a nice blend of materials there that provide a nice screening buffer. Our intention is to maintain that buffer as much as possible. I think where we start to open up is when we get to the intersection. One of the things that we also looked at um, with cons consultation with the town staff was what we could do with that presentation of the wall. Um, where we had it originally, uh, you can see there, there were some utilities, there's some sewer and some gas. So we've actually <coughs> moved that uh, right on the property line now and have lined that with the um, intersection so that as you approach coming, in, coming off the turnpike, you'll be looking uh, dead center at that wall this gives you an idea of right there. There's a good aerial boat photograph of what it would look, or simulation, sorry, of what it could look like uh, at that intersection. That may show a little more green than what we would probably have there. Um, our goal is to obviously maintain as much vegetation as possible, and I know that's one of the concerns of staff um, is how much vegetation we are going to have there. Our goal is to basically limb up a lot of the mature vegetation there so that we do have some sight lines through and then have some understory underneath. Uh, if you, as you're looking at that, that wall would be a stone simulated product uh, with landscaping. And then on the next tier where you get to the parking lot where inventory would be parked, we'd have some islands in there that as well would be um, landscape. Um, as I mentioned, the separation between the two is 265 feet. That meets the 45 mile an hour posted speed limit on Hygis. One of the things that we discovered during the uh, inventory analysis with MDOT is that in their records they had that posted as 35 miles an hour. Uh, in discussion with the town's consultant Bill Bray and with the MDOT, uh, even though I don't think MDOT has ever really officially approved that, they've recommended that we utilize the 45 miles an hour. That's important because as the higher speeds you go, the longer tapers you need to make your safe turn lanes. So that again adds to the need to really move that entrance down further on high speed. Um, there is a small impact to wetlands. There's a small thread of drainage wetlands um, that we will cross. Overall, we're still well below um, any compensation from DOT. Right now, we're a little over 8,500 square feet of wetland impact as the design stands. Uh, we have revised the stormwater calculations. We still anticipate using three infiltration ponds. Uh, we did consider looking at uh, storage of roof runoff, but one of the challenges with that is even the runoff that comes off the roof has high concentrations of bacteria. That would have to be shock treated or something adding to a complication uh, with on the site. Uh, if we're going to use it for cars, we, we can't have that kind of water in contact with the vehicles. So the idea would be uh, that we'll maintain the three ponds as we have shown here. Um, we're before you this evening. We have other consultants here that can discuss aspects of the building, if you so wish. Mr. Ahrens is here can discuss aspects of the business. Um, we're here this evening because we're kind of at a standstill until we can get this nudged off preliminary. We've got further work to do with MDOT, MDP, and of course with the council. So this evening we're looking for hopefully an approval so that we can move this forward um, uh, with the contract zone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this, we do have an opportunity this evening for public comment on this. If there's anyone here that would like to get up and speak, please approach the podium. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Want this one? Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll leave all the stormwater questions to my colleague. <laughs> um, I, um, I'm glad you relocated the driveway for the south. I, I have no problem with that. I think it's good. Uh, just a couple of things I, I want you to address. 
staff brought up the um, uh, in the parking area. Could you just explain your reasoning behind not? Uh, I think they, you know, landscape islands in the parking parking area. You want to yes, talk about we that we have provided some small islands in the back. Again, uh, with most car dealerships, uh, the inventory issue becomes problematic for snow removal and. A lot of that has to do also with some of the vegetation that's on the cars itself. Um, if you look at most car dealerships in the rear, it's usually an open area. Um, given the land configuration, that just keeps spreading the need for impervious out. We're trying to contain that. Uh, we are up against some wetlands in there. So given the configuration of the land, how it spaces out, we felt this was the most efficient way to uh, collect the stormwater, treat it in the infiltration basins that we've provided on the plan, Further pushing that out would push those infiltrations closer to wetlands um, and may not even have space for them. Things are pretty tight in there as they stand now. You can see the wetland thread that goes through the middle of the site and where we've located things. So there is a, f uh, a fair amount of wetlands uh, to the south that we're trying to protect. Okay. Um, I mean, I understand that rationale. Uh, I'm not so um, I, don't, I don't really, I know staff you know, is, is promoting the um, landscape islands, but I, I understand your rationale for that. Uh, I'm kind of, I, I think everything looks terrific. Um, I'm kind of intrigued with this uh, triangle though, right where the intersection is, where the state still owns that. Is that typical that the state owns little passes of land at intersections like that? I think when they took that, uh, my understanding is that, like I said, there's already utilities that cross that corner. Yeah. But I think in the future that if and when Tigus had a higher traffic volume, that could be preserved to make the right, the exclusive right turn up on pain. Okay. Um, I, I think the, um, the idea of working with the town on the, on the stone wall, that makes sense. Yeah, especially, you know, again, we can, that's something we can possibly even take up with the contract zone about who will maintain and yeah. um, how it gets built and what materials it gets built with. Um, obviously, this is a community feature, not necessarily <coughs> something for um, Acura. This is more of a, a town welcome to Scarborough kind sure, of feature. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other thing that came up in staff's comments was um, an inventory of the trees, which that's no. going to be kind of a painstaking process. There's a lot of trees in there right now. Um, what we've proposed is to uh, prune as many trees as up. There's two options that we can look at here. One, we can do the inventory, but it would be very burdensome. It's very dense vegetation all along Payne and along Hygis especially. Um, the other option could be that we just provide an area that we work with the town during the construction of this to isolate the trees that we want to save or prune. The third option, which is not our interest, would be, you know, if, there, if there's going to be issues, we could just mow that down and replant that. But unfortunately, with replanting, it takes so long for that to become a sustainable buffer that I think it's in all our interest to work together to, to save the natural buffer. Um, I do have some pictures there that will show you that there's, you know, a pretty mature stand of trees, especially along Hygis, of probably 25 to 30 feet. Uh, the idea would be to clear some of those up so it provides some nice areas underneath, <coughs> but to use that height to block, because the way the building sits higher on Hygis, it would block those rear parking areas. Um, I, I think I'm all set. Thank you, Roger. Rachel. Yeah, I have, uh, <clears throat> uh, I've got no problem with the, the driveway either, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, Hygis Parkway or on Payne Road, the, the way you've got those, those cuts. Um, I've got a couple of questions. You have the proposed recreation area. Uh, is that a dog park or? Yes, that's going to be a contained walking area for, for customers uh, with pets. Uh, they can park out there and there will be a fenced area where they can take their pets and uh, more like a little obstacle course and things like that within there, but uh, it's more for the clientele than it is for the public. All right, you are, you are going to have to um, have a way to treat the waste and a way to collect it. So as we start to, it is hazardous waste, uh, and you might want to consider the different fixtures that uh, are available for dog parks for ways to handle that or to dispense with the... Uh, <clears throat> one-use plastic bags. Yeah. 
Understood. Uh, another question I had, uh, the uh, proposed car wash, I, I understand that that's uh, kind of a, a phased a process, but are you actually going to build it, but basically have an empty building as you build the, the dealership and then put the guts in it? Or are we going to be having a blank wall at the end of the building, at the back of the building, and then later put a car wash on it? How is that phasing going to work? What's it going to look like? The, the structure will be built. Excuse me, could you approach the podium and introduce yourself? My name is uh, Adam Ahrens, and um, representing Patriot Acura, we'll build the structure. We may not install the guts, as it were, um, at the onset, but uh, it'll happen shortly thereafter. All right, thank you. Um, another question that I had, if I can find the page, looking for bright orange marks. Uh, I had a question about traffic flow in one area, uh, sheet 5 of 16. The, the center road, uh, parking, the, the, the center aisle, I guess, going up to, you know, it's on the inside of the property. There we go. This, you have the center, the center aisle. How's that going to be used? Are people, cars going to be coming out of the uh, repair area, parked, and then that's going to be exits? Or I, I can see the potential for some congestion and con I think primarily that there. will be, uh, you're correct, that will be both customer and repair vehicles. Uh, they'll have the opportunity to come in off of pain, to make the right turn down, loop in, park, when they exit, uh, ideally they would go out around the corner rather than in. Um, what we can do is uh, during the final phases of that, we can put some traffic control signs and, and, and markings down so that people are clear about the direction we can guide them. I think, I think that that would be very good. I think you're going to need that. Uh, I also, I, while I'm sympathetic with the concern about snow removal and islands and the parking lot, uh, and I realize that a lot of other car dealerships um, have vast spreads of asphalt. Uh, in Scarborough, we really pay a lot of attention to the parking areas uh, and the landscaping in the parking areas. Uh, the winter is one, one, uh, one season out of four, uh, and that would be the, certainly in the winter there might be some, some issues, but. I would really uh, urge you to take a look at providing some landscaping and some way to break up some of those areas. In the summer, given how hot this area, this climate is getting, this expanse of uh, asphalt without some shade areas is, is going to really get pretty warm out there. Uh, just so we're clear, I mean, this is not the the typical mall parking lot. Most of these parking spaces that are provided out there will be inventory. So a lot of these areas will be storage areas. So you won't have a lot of people migrating back and forth, so to say. But I do hear your point about yeah. concerns of thermal impacts. Yeah. And um, I think I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bob. So I have to preface my questions and comments with, I apologize, it's a late hour and I have a tendency to be very blunt this time of night, so please forgive me in advance. Why do we have two curb cuts? We have two curb cuts such that we can have deliverables primarily was our original thought. We've said no to how many applicants here in front of us tonight? I understand that. We also have frontages on two different streets as well. This is contract zoning. It's contract zoning. I understand that as well. And we have met with the traffic consultant who has supported us. And we felt at the last meeting that we had general uh, support from the board with regards to that. They just wanted the support of the traffic engineers. So and what does staff feel? How, is staff okay with two curb cuts? I, you want to go? 
and saying no to all the other applicants who've come in front of us? I think the main uh, difference here is that on, along Payne Road, uh, where the right in, right out is proposed, there's a raised median. Mm -hmm. um, so the taking a left out of there is, I wouldn't say impossible, but close to impossible for okay. most people. Um, so I think that's the main difference uh, between the other projects that we've seen. Well done, thank you. Um, I'm hearing a lot of no to staff requests. I'm hearing no to, we're not going to, you know, do a tree inventory. We're not going to treat roof runoff separately. We're not going to give you shading and landscaping in the um, parking lot, even though it's not like a mall. Why are we hearing no when this is contract zoning? First of all, we still have to meet the regular site plan standards. There, there should be no difference between this and regular performance standards. So I understand your point, which is contract zoning. However, our understanding is that's primarily left up to the council to decide what public benefit, which is the big issue with this. I just would also say that we have worked diligently with staff to look at improvements on Haggis. Um, we have actually, with this proposal that we have before us this evening, there are substantial amounts of money that Mr. Adams has have to commit to the improvements out there. Um, we have put major factors on the road. We've looked at the worst case scenarios as recommended by uh, the consultant. So I hear you loud and clear. We'll take a look at the landscaping in the back. Uh, as far as other things though, and Mr. Adams will probably speak to that, we have made diligent strides in not saying no to staff with regards to improvements on Haggis, which are extremely expensive. He's up against it already given mm -hmm. the poor soil conditions out here and the cost of the development. Mm -hmm. So we do feel we've made some um, compromises with staff uh, for this project. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably going to hear that the budget on this has far exceeded his uh, initial estimates. Um, so we're, we're at a point, we're at a breaking point, and mm -hmm. I think Mr. Aarons will speak to that. Um, well, I, you know, financially, uh, financially aside, I will tell you that Aesthetically, and as it relates to the environment, um, it's not going to end up a row of parking spots. It's just not. I won't let that happen. I would not move ahead with the sea. So every time you see an island, and there will be additional islands, including up here, mm -hmm. there will be trees. If not, um, they, they're impossible to plow if you don't know that the, that right. the curb cut is there. Um, so you'll see this will be broken up here in two to three or four different spots, and then the longer rows, um, as I've seen these drawings, I anticipate having an additional, call it a two-spot island. Mm -hmm. um, so probably two more in, in the long, one in the longest row and one in the second longest row in the back. Um, and that will provide some shade. The only issue that you have around cars and trees is that they just have to be trees that don't drip. Sure. <laughs> No, and, and I understand sort of what you're saying about, too, because, you know, I, I uh, have relatives who live in Florida, and every year I go there, there's, like, another car dealership there. And I think about how wonderful it is for them because they have palm trees. And so you can see everything, you know, whereas we have, we want to have this wonderful mix of deciduous and, right. and um, what's the other opposite of the dis oh, Thanks, oh, Sully. Um, so I would ask that um, a number of things. Um, that when we do put a recommendation back to town council that we talk about some of these standards that we need to impose including a detailed landscape management plan um, so that we can talk about sort of and formalize the description that mr seymour gave us about having you know the limbed canopy up to a certain point so that you maximize your viewpoint and maybe offset that with some nice shrubbery down at the base kind of a thing. So, so the public benefit is, is sort of what I'm getting at here is that I do believe that there's opportunity here still for public benefit and we've been doing a number of contract zones in Scarborough over the last month or two and we have, um, we've said no a couple times. And um, this is the gateway to Scarborough off the turnpike. We understand that this is, this is, um, and, and I'm glad that Mr. Seymour brought up sort of that this is the town council's opportunity, but it's our job as a planning board to sort of weigh in on what this is. And, and I'm 
thinking back to when we had our first joint town council and planning board meeting where we talked about bringing some environmental and resiliency efforts to the table with respect to public benefit. Um, because you have just kitty corner from you, you have flooding issues. And so I talked about, can we go into the capital improvement plan and look at one way, some ways that we can make sure that we're not going to be adding to that, but actually alleviate it. And we have so much development going on in this area too, that we don't want it to be of the last person in is now responsible for whatever the flooding issue is. We need to take care of it as we go in this area. <laughs> and um, so I'm seeing some of the public benefit that, that we could do in addition to, to a landscape, a detailed landscape management plan, is if you're not gonna inventory the trees, then we want a forestry management plan as well. Because I would like to see that that forest stand gets maintained and and covenants and deed restrictions. I'd also like to see that the wetlands in this area are maintained in covenants and deed restrictions because they're our best, both the forests and the wetlands are the, I don't mean to sound like a tree hugger here, but they're the greatest lines of defense when it comes to resiliency in this area, okay? Which means your cars aren't gonna get flooded and you're not gonna have to replace them, okay? Let alone the trees, you know, the, the, the leaves falling on them. I also heard that roof runoff has bacteria in it, and that's why you don't want to treat the roof runoff separately. I'm not going to buy that for a second. I also want to um, really have you think long and hard about stormwater in this area, and um, if town council would like a few more other public benefits, I have quite a list going. And so I really want to stop hearing no on this, okay? Just so we're clear, we have, uh, provide you stormwater calculations, and we've exceeded the standards and and when we do contract zoning we're, we're moving in a direction where the minimum standards aren't enough so we really appreciate you leading the way in that and I think that that needs to be a message to town council that in this in some ways you've met a mini, minimum standard in other ways you haven't so again I apologize for the terse blunt honest but I'm not going to mince, mince words here no, tonight and, so and I want to be fair to you yeah um, uh, the challenges of this piece of property mm -hmm. um, the current owner and her situation mm -hmm. uh, the settlement of the debt that's due to the town as a result of the sale of this yeah um, have uh, may have just made it too burdensome yeah and you may end up having yeah somebody else come before yeah. you five years from now but yeah that, that and I apologize I'm not no, privy no, no, to I, all not. of that information that happens I'm just I know that what my capacity is and I see a lot of potential here for for public benefit and it just it's it's hard to see a no to a lot of the things that staff has brought up there are there are um, we have conducted ourselves as a business over 15 years now um, as a model citizen by reinvesting and improving things I mean I actually have access to the trails from the dealership we have we have we have you know, talked about having a place for bicycles. We have loaner bicycles. Where we are totally sensitive, but there's a chicken and egg issue here as it relates to the money. Um, and and um, what started out um, with a project that we were hoping was going to be in the fives is now in the eights. Yeah, I'm at my breaking point. Yeah, and I'm okay with no. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm just not sure that the city of Scarborough is okay with no. Absolutely. I have, I have other places that I would have to go and that's okay. I just, it just has to make some sense to get return on investment. And in the two year process that we've been at, um, we've seen an inflation of everything, a dramatic inflation. But I can tell you this, I don't need more. Mm -hmm. I need to give back more, mm -hmm. but there has to be something to give from. And that's just kind of where we've hit. I would love for this to be 100% solar. Would, I would love it. Mm -hmm. um, um, we'll make sure that it's white at least so that we can get to the, yeah. to the solar point. But I am, I mean, I own an environmental consulting business mm -hmm. um, that we help retail establishments um, in big box retailers in becoming much better citizens and, and then we actually tell them how to exploit that. Absolutely, and Mr. Aarons, don't get me wrong, I truly appreciate your interest in your, in your investment in the town of Scarborough and um, I, I um, 
you know, I, I, and I understand too if the town council feels that I've overstepped, but I know that we have Jaguar dealerships, we have Mercedes dealerships. There's the reason. There's a reason they're all coming to, to um, Scarborough, and I'd love to welcome you here. So, good luck. Thank you, Robin. <clears throat> um, so, I, mean, I think they covered a lot of the, the topics here. You, you know, from where, from my point of view, um, I think, I think this needs to get over to council. Um, I. I'm not sure I see a whole lot of value in having you repeat these steps at the time and expense. There are definitely issues that need to be worked on. Um, however, you do have time in between some of these steps, and it is a lengthy process. You knew it going in. Um, it's probably longer than you want it to be, but it is what it is. Um, you have time to work out some of these issues. My advice is um, some of these items, yes, I, you don't want death by a thousand paper cuts. But don't let some small shrubs stop you from no, coming to Scarborough. That. That. So tidy up some of the, some of these loose ends. Um, you, you know, one that one example of you know your rendering doesn't really match your landscape plan. Well, let's let's button that up a little bit. You know, um, but the, in the overall bigger picture, you really need buy-in from the council um, before I I'd like to see this board spend more time on this. Um, you're, you're there. I mean, you you've got to got a decent plan but there's some loose ends nothing that can't be resolved through conversation a little more time not what you want to hear but a little bit more time a little bit more conversation I think you can get there so um, you know that being said um, I, I do have a draft motion here tonight. okay so I will I will put this forth and we'll see how the colleagues feel and we'll go from there I move to grant preliminary provisional site plan approval for the project titled Acura Dealership by Patriot Realty Saco LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 1-18-19 with the following conditions. One, the applicant shall revise landscape plans to better coordinate with the details provided within the dealership renderings provided that the submission package for the 2-4-19 board meeting. Two, the applicant shall continue to work with staff to refine the required off-site improvements on Hagas Parkway as suggested by Traffic Solutions. Three, the applicant shall address the remaining staff and peer review comments in the memo dated 2419. These revis revisions shall be incorporated into the final site plan submission to the planning board. Now, that, that is the motion. Um, do I have a second? Second. Second, and as part of the discussion format of this, um, I do want to ask the applicant real quick, do you see an, anything in these conditions that is going to prevent you from taking this to that next step to the council. Um, I, I do not. I do not. Other than the roundabout. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 let's slow it down. Yeah, I know. That would give us our 35. That would be really good. <laughs> All right. Um, any other discussion around this item? So just uh, just to be um, clear, this, this will go to the town council for discussion. And if it moves forward from there, it'll come back it to... Comes back. Final. <laughs> At that point, we'd also have to have DOT and DEP approvals as well. Right on. So, yeah. Okay. That said, uh, all in favor. So that's your unanimous. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you so, very much. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, if I might, just, just so we provide, you know, uh, as much clarity as we can moving forward, mm -hmm. one of the things I think, as, as uh, Jamel said sort of at the outset, is part of, you know, part of your duty is doing a preliminary site plan review based on the standards that we have, but also part of your, your um, what's talked about in the ordinance is providing comments to council if you have any on the existing contract zone language. Um, so I did hear some general, um, I, I thought what I heard, and so sort of correct me if I go astray. Um, seems like there's uh, general comfort around the proposed signage um, and, you know, sort of at least in the direction that's headed. Certainly heard some comments about stormwater, and I think you know this preliminary approval recognizes that there, there's a, a minimum standard that's being met. But there was clearly some comments about maybe wanting to um, see the minimums extended. And so we want to be clear as to what the board's sort of position on that. And, that, and then I think other issue that I heard, but I think really is in the board's wheelhouse as part of the site plan review process, is the two curb cuts, and again, I, I'm, I think that, that issue's pretty much been resolved, but I just want to be sure we sort of have clarity around those all these elements so that when they do come back, it's either, yep, let's keep talking about them, or 
you know what, we, we've sort of. Yeah, that's fair. And, and at the council, um, we give it to the council, that is a strictly council. It's not a, that is not a joint meeting between council and board, is it? Correct. So, right, the next step will be the applicant will go back to council, and council will, you know, do their due diligence as part of what we talked about our last con contract zone workshop. You know, at their sole discretion, we'll be sure that the contract zone sort of meets the public benefit and meets the uh, uh, um, consistency with the comp plan. That's really going to be the main things that the, uh, that the council um, will be approving, and when this comes back, it will come back with an approved contract zone, and um, so that will really be what amends the zoning for this property to allow you then to do your job to, again, go back into the site plan review ordinance and say, okay, have they met our standards? Um, so if there's anything that needs to be addressed further, that's this is the board's time to say, do you have a, a, you know, a singular voice to the council or, or not? So. Go ahead, Roger. When it, um, <clears throat> when it comes back to us again after it's been to the council, mm -hmm. that's when the council, council has said that they're they basically approve of everything at this stage. And then when it comes back to us, we treat it as, as if it was a normal um, presentation, um, normal development. In other words, that, that, that auto dealership has been approved yes. for the site, and we just go from there. Correct. You'll basically, like you did with your preliminary approval, you'll, you'll apply the site plan review standards. Um, so. I think the, the idea of the preliminary approval is, yes, the applicant's in the right direction. Are there things to be worked on? Sure. But I think, you know, at this point, with the preliminary approval being granted, that, yep, you know, there could be some additional work that needs to be done on the off-site mitigation, but we'll have to look at those details. But, you know, we're not so far off that we can't get there in the next couple months. Um, so to your point, yes, it, it'll be the contract zone agreement needs to be approved by council. And it gets recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and that is now the zoning for the property. So to your point, when it comes back to the board, it's, you know, you're just being sure that they comply with the site plan review standards and any standards that are also in the contract zone, which really become zoning standards so, at that point. So at that point, we don't, we don't have to consider the benefits and whether it applies to the comp plan or anything like that. Right. We just treat it like it was, it was um, zoned for auto, auto dealerships from that point on. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because I think part of the problem is there's a blending of who's responsible for what. Right. And I think know? at this stage there is, I mean, the, the, the contract zone language talks about that, you know, there is, <coughs> the plan board really have two jobs right now. One, review it for preliminary approval against the current standards to provide comments on the existing contract zone language. So there is, there is sort of that duplicitous role that the board has at, right at this stage. <coughs> but you're right, once it comes back, at that point, you know, again, the language, the, the zoning language says the consideration of public benefit and consistency with the comp plan is sole discretion of the council. Once the contract zone's approved, that's sort of what we, you know, they're the, they're the, uh, that's their, that's their charge. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we have to provide uh, some feedback to council on this, I mean, I think um, a clear delineation of that public benefit that we're receiving. We, we, we are aware that this is a difficult property that to work with, uh, more difficult than probably originally thought. There's some real big opportunities here to protect some of this wetlands and treat some of this water, and I think those are, those are nice benefits that we may or may not have if another applicant comes through that could be provided. So for my two cents, I, you know, I think, I think that protection of what's around you is going to be important, um, and I think the council should consider that. Robin, do you have something? Yeah, I guess I was just wondering procedurally how we do have that one voice toward two council about what Nick's saying is how we sort of codify or formalize some of the, the protections that, that can go into the public benefit or the comments to town council. Um, will, will just the minutes from this meeting be enough for them or do we need to sort of, you know, because, you know, a force, you know, a for, you know, do we need to say some of the other items that they could consider were a landscape management plan or a forestry management plan. You know, what procedurally do we need to do to either have one voice or for me to express that I'm just one member of the public of the planning board, but here's a list of public benefits that I see could be added to the contract language. If I could quickly yes, just please. maybe help mm -hmm. there. I, I think what would benefit us, them, staff, I, I think to 
put that overarching goal up there. Okay. Protection of the natural resources. Mm -hmm. Staff, I think, has the idea, the development, the tools that they can kind of list out, and council's got to ultimately kind of look at that and say, here are some tools we can do to protect natural resources. What do we want to ask the applicant to do to reach that public benefit? Does that sound reasonable? Uh, yeah, I do think, you know, as, as Nick said, as a board, putting mm -hmm. out, you know, sort of the, the, the broad brush, you know, sort of what are our goals? and sort of allow that negotiation to occur, frankly, you know, and discussions to occur that will happen. Uh, Perfect, yeah. But again, I, I mean, as, as you said, you are a citizen of the community as well. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it, if you do want to put comments together, it is important to, you know, just recognize that you're stating them as- A resident. As a resident. Yep. I mean, that's- Perfect. Still your, you don't give up that right. Yeah, and I think <laughs> it's also worthwhile to say that, you know, as board members and as residents that it is worthwhile to attend some of these meetings on our own time, you know, perhaps just to mm -hmm. either get that feel for how it's going. Um, sometimes, you know, tone is, can be lost in reading minutes, um, you know, but it, it's helpful to get there to see what direction the council even is leaning yeah. on something like this. Gives us a little bit better of a perspective of how we should approach the project as well. Um, so that'd be my two cents. I think, do you have, I mean, am I hearing from staff that you need a more broader brush overarching goals from this board or do you think through conversations that we've had this evening and over time, you kind of get the sense that we, there are some, some things we would want to see. Are you, are you clear as mud? Well, I think I've heard two folks now mention um, to really codify sort of what, what the streetscape it's going to look like in plan and management plan and also preservation of those areas that are otherwise in, unimpacted right now. I did hear the applicant, um, the, the owner, sort of say he, he's committed to actually making some of those improvements that were talked about in terms of the stormwater, bringing in some um, uh, um, trees, uh, uh, trees Tree some landscape islands within the parking field. So I think that that starts to hedge towards the direction. So if I'm misrepresenting what you said, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I heard that. Um, so uh, again, I, I think those at this point are sort of the two key elements that I've heard from Mr. McGee and Ms. Saunders. And so um, you know, I guess it would take one more to make it an official opinion of the, uh, <laughs> of the board that we have. Um, and I, I just I can chime in real quickly, and I know it's late. Uh, I think there's some things we can do as far as deed restrictions as well for the wetlands and uh, or some of the buffers or things like that. So I, we're not, I'm, I'm just want to apologize if we appear to that way. We are amenable to that. It's just that some of the design features, one particular the roof, we did look at that. And one of the things I forgot to mention was if we had to put that water into a tank, we're in such poor soils that that becomes a very expensive uh, procedure. So that was one of the reasons we kind of yeah. cast that aside. So. No, thank you. And, and again, I apologize for my terse tone and blunt and straight to the point. It's just late. <coughs> so, thank you. And, um, you know, I, I'm thinking out loud. I like, to, I like to just think out loud sometimes. Perfect. Sometimes to my detriment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, at some point, you know, watching this process, I, I felt, having done a couple of these contracts and I was in sitting jointly with the council, um, I think sometimes they struggle with these you know, what is that public benefit aspect to this? And not only that, you don't want to be hashing out ideas. I don't think you want to fully hash them out in a public meeting setting when it, I think you want that collaboration of back and forth or at least kind of get that feel for where they are, where you are, and have, you know, I'm not saying <coughs> it's, um, it needs to be set in stone, but I think there's got to be a little bit, and I don't know if there's a great process for this. I think that's probably one I was missing. I, I think to your point, one of the most difficult things is just the term public benefit. Correct. What's the scope, the scale, the size, the cost, you know, all that. And it's, it's a wide open term, and I think we have one fear about it, and you may have another aspect which, about it. <laughs> which is why I think I, I would take this moment to encourage you maybe to really outline what you believe here the public benefit is, mm -hmm. where you're, what you're willing to say, these are things that we, we should certainly consider or would consider. Yep. Yep. It helps guide that conversation to get to council because you don't want it as open-ended as what this discussion is. I'll tell you that right now, especially with 60 people in the room waiting to comment on it. Um, you know, that's, 
I, I would really encourage you to try to really put pen to paper and really think about how you're going to guide this public benefit aspect. And that's just based on my observations. From yeah, we, we've had some preliminary discussion about that, especially with the aspects to the traffic and that, those impacts. Mm -hmm. um, but we can definitely <coughs> do the equal for the natural resources. And we've known all along that the streetscape is a major component given the gateway opportunity we have. Yes, Roger. You know, when, you, when we talk about public benefits, um, one thing that I always keep in mind, at least when I'm thinking about that, is what could go there if it wasn't for this, okay? And because uh, we've had, over the years, we've had contract zones where something has gone in, and if it wasn't for the contract zone, something much lesser could have gone in there. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, sometimes you've got to look at it, I think, in that point of view as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, and one yes. more comment, if I could, too, is that we have we also have a different council than when the process started. So I think helping them along, putting the pen to paper, and reminding them of all the things that we have established as far as the public benefit, I think that was a tremendous idea, Nick. Thank you, Rachel. Last thoughts on this? Uh, <clears throat> I, I think of, of where we started, and I look at the the. the renderings that you have here, and I think it's um, one of the things I would suggest in terms of, of, of public benefit is that um, it provides a very, let me use the term classy, um, gateway into Scarborough for folks coming off the, uh, off the, the turnpike. Um, there are other Buildings, obviously, on that corner, uh, including a line of trucks just you know, on the other side of the Irvings, and uh, folks turning down those lanes don't have that brand of a picture of Scarborough. But something like this, and I really appreciate the, the streetscape renderings that you've done, something like that uh, says something very different about us than what's there now. Uh, and I, I like it. Uh, I think there are some small details that we can work out. Um, and uh, actually, I, I hope this passes. And that's not where I was when we started the uh, discussion of having an accurate deal look here in Scarborough. So, well said. Um, staff, are we a little bit more comfortable with some of the feedback provided? I think so. I think you know from the from the minutes that are being generated, we can um, put together you know some salient points for the council to consider from from this board. And again, it's at their sole discretion, so we'll see what they do with it. <laughs> Jay, we may we may just put together a narrative as well, I just think outlining what our interpretation of this evening has happened, and then maybe we can collaborate back and forth before it goes to council. I did. Sorry, I know you can't hear, me, but I'm. <laughs> spoken to thousands before. Um, there may be the possibility of a workshop with a couple of representatives of the council, a couple of representatives of the staff, and a couple of representatives where we might be able to accomplish something before uh, it's past my bedtime, let's say. Right. Uh, <laughs> so that, and, and maybe that's something we can do on a, that, and publish it, but bring it down to a small group of people that we can kind of hash through that so that we can bring something to both groups that would satisfy everybody's needs. Appreciate that. All right. That being said, I think you are allowed to leave and maybe head back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you tonight. Um, next on our agenda, we have a staff report. I have a quick one tonight, at least for me. Um, I mean, we did provide a, a registration form for the local planning board's uh, main municipal training. Uh, there is one coming up on March 20th in Portland. Seems to be the closest one. So if anyone on this board is interested in participating, uh, feel free to get in touch with Doreen and she'll hook you up for the registration. Thank you. Well, you I would just say that hopefully at our next meeting we'll have two new board members. That's yeah. fully anticipate that. <laughs> uh, administrative amendment report. Uh, none during this time. Correspondence. I did see some letters. 
coming in. I haven't had a chance to review or open them, but. Uh, yeah, you want me to? Yeah, please. Those are uh, letters that staff has received uh, in regards to the Piper Shores Dorado project. Um, we figured we'd pass those along uh, when we get them. Okay. Thank you. And those are being kept as we sort of have a public comment folder going as this uh, continues on. And of course, we'll con continue to supply those through the Dropbox so you'll have access so, to all of them. As a process question on this, mm -hmm. um, I noticed that some of the letters were individually addressed to us as board members. Mm -hmm. Do, does a copy of that need to be provided to staff, or are we assuming they actually submitted a copy of the letter to us is already on file with you guys? Uh, so, what? well, I'll, I guess I'll ask Doreen how she processes those. They've been dropping them off. What's that? The, the people writing the letters have been dropping them off, mm -hmm. or mailing them in. And then are you open? Are you, we're I, opening. I open so. the one that's addressed to Corey. Right. <laughs> We've so, been putting and those in the, the, the file. But the ones that are addressed to us individually, you don't know really what's It's the in. same letter. Yeah. Oh. They come in a bunch. So where they come to our attention, <clears throat> we open them, yeah. and if it's the same letter, we're really just going to put one copy. Okay. You know, in even the file. And do you check for powder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, That's why Doreen gets to open them. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, planning board comments. I want to say one thing tonight, and I appreciate each one of everyone at this table. Um, fantastic job. Uh, you guys make the job of being chair really easy, so keep it up. Um, and staff, you know, as always, I think we're kind of wandering in the woods without you some days, and you guys always do a great job. So I just want to say I'm phenomenal. All of the comments from this board, the, the work you guys all put in. Right back at you, really Mr. Chair. You did a great job motivating us and, and really propelling us through the agenda tonight. So really, you did a great job asking people just to focus on the changes, and that way we don't get sort of belabored in, in a certain project. So you're doing a great job. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I would like to say that we're just lulling you into a false sense of security. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to pull a coup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I have a, another comment just uh, in general about the training from the Maine Municipal Association. And, and that is what I found out because I saw a training that I was interested in in my role on the Conservation Commission in terms of getting people engaged in the process that they're offering. And <clears throat> it turns out that because of our role, we can be members of the Maine Municipal Association and can get a password and log in and register ourselves if there is a training that we see that isn't specifically, you know, planning board, but that, that we think might be related to the work that we do. I'm planning on paying for this one myself, um, but it, it does provide us with an opportunity to really keep up with what's, what's out there in, in these roles. So. Roger. Yeah, I was just kind of <clears throat> curious uh, asking staff, is there any movement on the um, cell tower down approach name? Or is that? I haven't heard anything from Elgin. <laughs> seen any correspondence <laughs> I from? Heard a peep. I, know, I do know they have been having some discussions, ongoing discussions with the sanitary district based on the board's request that they look at other locations where those discussions have wound up. Um, yeah, so okay. I. The reason I ask is because I happen to be listening to a. Um, radio program about 5G, not that I understand mm -hmm. it, but one thing I took away from that is that with the way the technology is moving in terms of the need to accommodate data, mm -hmm. it sounds to me like we're going to need more cell towers because these new cell towers, because of the data, they don't go as far, they don't have the range. So I think the town's got to, at some point, it's got to take, you know, revisit this whole, um, you know, tower, transmission tower overlay district, because otherwise it's, whether we like it or not, we're not going to be able to accommodate what, what the technology that's out there. So, just a little hindsight from somebody who doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, no other planning board comments? I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh. All in favor. <laughs> All right. Look, it to me. For those who don't know, this is Rick Mineking. <clears throat> Hopefully someone is going to be appointed in the...